Recording in progress. There it is. Oh, hey, Sheila. It's been a couple there weeks. There she is. Yeah. Well, because we've been having, like, the different studio spots we've been doing. So we, this is the first time we're doing, uh, we're back in the Zoom after what? Maybe like a month or two, right? Uh, Zoom is probably more than a month. Yeah. Because it's been a couple weeks since we were live. And then, by the way, this is Tales from the Head with Coop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. If you, if the introduction and, didn't uh didn't got you. And I'm your host, Danny. But I'm pointing well. up, but you're really going to be that way. That yeah. way. So. Nope. There we go. Well, I could break my arm. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I, I'm Danny. Yo. Thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks for stopping. Thanks for coming by. But yeah. yeah, it's been it's been so it's not just schedules here. It's it's like we had a holiday week, which we didn't. I didn't do a formal announcement because you know what? It, we don't. We're not formal all the time. No. And and look, no. everyone took a break. So we had Thanksgiving. It's not a religious holiday. It's a food holiday. So everyone eats and, and celebrates it. So we did that. Then we had to. Mm-hmm. Um. We kind of had a busy week last week. Yeah. You know, and then, yeah, it was a shit week last week. So um, it just, you know, it is what it is. And we're, we're doing our best here. And, and as far as and I'm we're, concerned, we're damn, we're doing damn good, too. We're, we're, we damn good, too. <laughs> we're killing it while doing it, too. No, dude, like. <laughs> That's my Young Guns reference. <laughs> your Young Guns. Oh, I mean, I'll go back to in hip hop world. So um, yeah, my Warren G reference. I'll go back to some hip hop news that I, I I believe both of us will enjoy, but no, really quickly do like also we're doing this on a, we're doing this in an evening rather than our typical morning coffee, cafecito kind of hangout. That is very um, true. Um, and the reason for that is actually, is, uh, let me get real for you on here. Let me, let me do this live. Fuck it. We'll do this live. Um, Fuck it. We were supposed to meet up Sunday morning. I, I love driving. I, I love taking the drive up to to Cooper's house over here and, um, you know, enjoy ourselves a nice little coffee in the morning, maybe some bread. Say hi to the kids. Say hi to Steph. She's a sweetheart. Hey, Steph. Um, but unfortunately this week I had like a little panic. Well, I wouldn't say panic, but I had like an anxiety attack in the middle of the night again. Like I slept for like maybe 15, 20 minutes. Jesus Christ. And I got a, yeah, 15, 20 minutes. It was a little bit before. It must have been a little bit after midnight. And I got up. I couldn't go to sleep again. And then um, I started I started to itch. I started to itch, and I really want to scratch really, really bad. And somebody brought it up to my attention that actually scratching is a form of self-harm. Um, I didn't realize this until recently and, and like, I'm like, okay, well that makes sense because you're scratching, you're essentially, you're breaking skin. Yeah. Um, so that's a lot, that's like kind of one of my nervous scratch my face as you scratch your face. No, dude, for me, it's like, no, but I, I mean, like, like, I'm not comparing. Yeah. 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 Sure and worse. like, or scratch my leg and stuff. And I remember that night I had like a really bad urge to like scratch my leg and like tossing and turning. And I think I finally fell asleep again when it was like almost, I don't know, maybe two or three. Like I got up, I Jeez. stood up, I stayed up for a couple of hours until I was able to go back to sleep. So when my alarm went off to make my way to, to the dead air digital studio, um, I'm like, yeah, this is not going to work out. No, I'm like, this is not going to yeah. work out. So this is why like, as soon as I got up, I texted him like, Hey dude, this is, I'm not going to be able to come in. Um, so thanks for being flexible, dude. It's okay, buddy. It was a weird Sunday. Really? Why? Well, it was a great Sunday. I just was very emotionally attached to the 49er game. So I was very oh, distraught. I saw some of it. Yeah, I saw it some of It was such that, a back and forth of uh, in- interceptions. We um, mm-hmm. sacked Russell Wilson, I think, four times. It was just a beatdown. Um, but it didn't work out. There were some questionable calls, of course. But at the end Always. of the day, at the end of the day, though, we we held our own fate because uh, Jimmy threw like two bonehead interceptions, just terrible. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it is what it is. But 
I had a we what the positive, which is like, hey, glass half full. Um, the positive, like I said, I took it. I just was very. I wanted that win. I hate Seattle so much. So it's yeah. just every year it's like we got at least win one game with them. I I hate when mm-hmm. we lose both. Um, fuck Pete Carroll. Fuck the city of Seattle. Mm-hmm. If we have listeners there, you should move because either you're better than that. No, you're better than that. There we go. That's how I kept them a but, little. I took I took them down a peg, but I saved them a little. Now, Coop, are you just saying this out of frustration out of the 49ers? Or do you really mean fuck the city of Seattle? Because they've given us so many great things. Yeah, but here's the thing, dude. That's that's all old news, okay? Like you gotta you gotta keep doing like you can't be like a, a good parent for like the first three years and then just be like, well, I was a good parent those three years and then just give up for the rest of it. Go fuck yourself, Seattle. You know I have no fucking I have no saying this. I'm not parent. No, you asshole. know what? How I don't hate you? Seattle. You? I hate the Seahawks though. Um, okay, that's fair enough. You know what? I hate the Seattle Sounders, which is the uh the soccer team up there. So well there but you the, go. And now we have the Kraken to hate because uh yeah. we're Sharks fans. Yeah, with the with the Kraken. So there you go, dude. Um, All hey, around hate, hate, hate. But you know what? The city looks nice, though. I love to visit. It does again, and I and I should get to my positive port part. You know, I only been to I've been to Seattle once, and I was only there for like maybe ten hours. It was when I was on tour with Maya. We went up there. We played the show. We played the show. We slept in the parking lot of a Costco because that's what you do when you're poor and you're yeah. touring in a fucking hardcore band. Like. Fuck. Playing to like 10, 20 people every night because you're fucking hardcore like that. Um, so <laughs> I, we, that we slept in we slept in the freaking Costco parking lot because um, we couldn't find a Walmart. So we slept there, and then we went to um, the next morning. We went to like the first like Starbucks, and then we took a picture in front of the uh, Space Needle, and then and then took a drive. Oh, I thought I fixed this thing. Anyways, um, I took a drive down to. Um, to Spokane, Washington, and that was that was kind of fun. No, I don't really hate Seattle. It's just I have to hate Seattle Seahawks. Um, but we did do some good stuff. Hold on, my we're okay. So this is why I realized I hate uh, doing Zoom call because my interface for some reason always does that connection disconnection thing, and I even bought a new cable for it, and it's doing it. So it might be actually that. My interface, much as I think it's just time for a new interface. Maybe, <sighs> maybe you did a good run, buddy. You did a good run. You had a good run. Yeah, good run, buddy. You'll be my backup. You're still good. I'm Side not piece. Away. Um. Well, while that twickers and flickers, I was gonna say, um, I did. We did go out and get a Christmas tree, which was nice. Oh yeah. Um, we got ourselves a a noble for. Oh. Yeah, which those, those are, are nice. nice too. Yeah, yeah, they're I, pricey though. Well, yeah, I think they're all like, I, it was the same price as the Douglas. But I mean, trees in general, yeah, I think they're mm-hmm. pricey right yeah. now. But you know what though, um, I'm not sure about, I'm not sure about you, but I prefer the natural trees rather than the the fake ones. It's the smell I, for me, dude. Maybe. Yeah, I 100 percent agree for that exact reason. Also, mm-hmm. if you think about it. Well, I don't know how many times have did you ever did you ever put together a fake tree? I have never. Okay, so what I was gonna say was also a plus was just the the complete fact that people bitch like, oh, you got to put the lights on. Dude, putting lights on a tree is so easy. Fucking yeah. putting uh putting a tree together and put taking it down every year fucking sucks. You know what you do when the tree's dead? You can take it out in the yard, hack it up with an axe, and throw it in the garbage, and you're done. Or you can leave it on the street. I mean, it's just like, it's that easy. Yeah. Well, what we end up doing is just, we, we cut the, the branches and like then firewood. We just cut the, yeah. For firewood for the summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The fuck. Um, or for just, you know, you can sharpen them and use them against people. Yeah. Maybe I'll be one of those weird people in Willow Glen and just like post them in my front yard. You know, I don't know. Willow, Willow Might Glen. Be a little bit crazy. Oh, are those the, are those the right wingies in Willow Glen doing that? I don't know. No, actually, I guess it's like the homeowners association. Oh, the HOA. My, my, yeah, my buddy has a has has a house down in Lincoln. Um, uh-huh. I, I love how I'm saying like streets and like in San Jose. Well, it's like a pretty a, big. It's a big street. Yeah. Well, no, well, you're saying, saying like, for people that, that will know, yeah. dude. Yeah. The people that do listen to this will know. Okay, that's you know fair enough. <laughs> hey, to, 
<laughs> That's true. Yeah, I mean, shout out to Vietnam, but I like I never met you, but maybe <laughs> If you use Google real quick, you can figure out what Danny's talking about. Lincoln Avenue, San Jose, California. There's Anyways, a place off Lincoln. All right. Uh, my buddy has a place right off uh, Lincoln Avenue. And I guess, like, um, the high school kids, um, like, they put it in your front yard because it's, like, it's like a tradition. Tra- do it. Don't do it. Oh, there it goes Twicking again. And then um, I guess, like, the... The HOA people were like, oh, no, it's by contract. You have to put it as part of the homeowner association. Oh, you're, for, uh, you're saying the Christmas decorations? The No, the Christmas tree in the front yard. You know how, like, how in Willow Glen has that? Well, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty unprofessionalist on my fucking my technical issues over here. Today's episode is brought to you by technical issues. No, you know what pisses me off? Uh, and it's funny because I I've noticed I say that phrase, which is what we're going to be talking about in a little bit. But which, you know what pisses me off? Oh you know what yeah, really yeah. Pisses me off? Every fuck. Last time we had this Zoom conversation, it, you're like, dude, just happened? get a new, just oh, get a yeah. new USB cord, and I'm like, all right, I order it. I'm using the new one, and still doing it. So, <sighs> no, I'm kidding, dude. Shit happens though. Like sometimes. You just got to eat the shit sandwich. I guess sometimes you have to just ride that beast, dude. Ride it. <laughs> Fuck. Or don't let it ride you, dude. Um, um, oh, I'm actually seeing this. I, I, I'm also, I, we haven't talked in a while, so I'm kind of excited to talk to you. Yeah. I might say. But um, last time we, so we did the recording studio on like, on a Friday night, the very next day, I went up to San Francisco where I saw a Beatles cover band. They're called um, the uh, the Fat Four. I'm not sure. Oh, if okay. You, they have like a show in Vegas and they have like a different like thing. It's really cool. They play all their music. In, they play like the instruments through to the time. They got the accents, the mannerisms. They have the costume changes. But I got the set list of them. So you can oh, see that's it. cool. And it's really cool for all you music nerds because it has like the temple and the timing and everything like that. Like, wow, um, that is cool. Like, for example, I'm seeing um, "Day in the Life." It goes from 63, 64, 65, 66, 67. Um, I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. Most likely, like some lighting bullshit or like something in the background, but like. Jude, it goes from 91 to 94. I, those, those cannot be like beats per minute or something. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. I don't know. That's interesting. It's interesting. I always love reading like the little notes on set lists. Um, maybe one day I'll show you the different set lists I have, but some of them have like like the tuning of the songs and like what guitars they're going to use and stuff like that. So I always find that more interesting than the actual like set list. Set list. I'm going to post my set list too. You should send me send me your set list picture or your favorite one, and I got one too. Oh, okay, mine my favorite one. Um, hmm. Mine doesn't have. Uh... Yeah, I I will look through it. I'll see which one's my favorite one. I'm thinking like right off the top of my head, it might be like I don't know. Actually, actually, I do know which one was my favorite one, but I didn't keep it. I um. About two or three years ago, we went to see Angels and Airwaves. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, huge Tom DeLonge fan myself. So um, I went with our friend um, Ray Avila, who's a great fucking guy. I love you, yeah. Ray, if you're listening to this. His his buddy, his bandmate. My bandmate, yeah. My 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 musical partner. Sorry, Coop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I went with Ray. I went with my buddy Josue and his wife. Cindy, who just had the firstborn, the firstborn child two days ago. So congratulations. Oh, wow. congratulations. Uh, yeah. congratulations to them. New parents. Um, yeah, new parents. Good luck on sleep there, buddy. Um, but like they were using Angels and Airwaves music for their wedding song. So when we went to see Angels and Airwaves, I got the set list of Angels and, uh, and Airwaves. Oh wow. And and the wife, Cindy, um, was like, Oh shit, Danny, can I take a picture of him? Like, I'm like, nah, you're gonna keep it. And she's like, Well, I'm like, yeah, yeah, here is is yours. She's like, no way, damn. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, the whole point, I mean, is it meant more to them or for yeah. her because it was like songs that they used for their wedding, it was there. 
Plus, like, she had, like, a big crush on Tom DeLonge. I mean, who who doesn't? Did you tell and me? And so it's yeah. cool because they actually have a frame. They have, like, the set list, Angels and Airwaves. They have a frame, and it's all up in their wall. So it, it was cool. But that's, I think that's my favorite set list. I'll see if I can get a picture of it. And um, so we can post it up. But I got that set list, but I gave it over to my, not my friend Josue, but specifically his wife, who's also my friend Cindy, because I knew it was going to awesome. mean more to her. So I'll get you a picture of that. <laughs> Yeah. I'm pretty sure I have a picture of That's it. That's a pretty special one. It is. Indeed. Hell yeah. What was the hip hop news you were going to talk about? Bro, did you see the video over the weekend of uh, Busy Bone fighting with 3-6 Mafia? No. Is that why mm-hmm. DJ Paul posted World Champs as yeah, uh, uh, yeah. DJ, so it was DJ like Paul and Busy GCJ. Bone started talking shit to like um um Two three six mafia on stage and start talking shit too. What's so, her name? So um, real quick, Busy Bone is the light skinned one that raps hella fast. Yes, that's okay. it. Um, a Bone Dogs in Harmony. Yes, um, he started talking shit and it started like he threw like a bottle at like a water bottle at them and it, like and this is all going on on stage, and like Swiss Beat came out and fucking like had to like squash Jesus. the beef and shit. It was freaking ridiculous. Dude. It was a great what, video. What's their uh, production company again? Three six or three six. Hypno- hypnotic Hyp- minds. Hypnotic minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That shit was hella funny when I saw the because uh, I didn't know what he was talking about. Because uh-huh. I see that he trains for like uh, was it like Muay Thai or something? Yeah. Um, DJ Paul, but and then I didn't even know they were kind of back together. Yeah, I didn't know they were making but I, a comeback. But, but that's the thing. I saw that they were on tour with Bone Thugs. And oh. I and I got excited about this. So this must have happened on that same tour. That, that yeah. I saw. So so they're beefing on their own tour. That's yeah. funny, dude. It's not I, like I'm a one off. I'm going to tag you. I got to tag you in this video, dude. You got, I, I'm going to tag you on it. I'll find it. But what's also funny, oh, he threw a water bottle at La Chat. Oh. Yeah. And, um, oh God. Hey, Let me see if I can find it. Maybe that, unpopular dude. opinion right now because, you know, I love 3 6 Mafia, but Busy Bone is my favorite um, from uh, Bone Thugs. Uh, that's definitely the only Bone Dugs I can I can name off the top of my head. Well, there's Crazy Bone. There is Crazy Bone, but Busy Bone I can always remember. Yeah, he's he's cra- memorable as fuck. Yeah, because just his style, dude. He's one of the, for me. He's one of the first rappers that came out with like the speed, and then like yeah, of course, like the, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twista came and out then, like, with Busta it. Rhymes. Busta Rhymes. Um, yeah, dude. The whole yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. For sure, I agree with that. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, that's big hip hop news. A shout out to the world champs, uh, three six mafia, triple six. I played them six at my uh, wedding. North North. Um that, that was fun. I played sipping on some scissor. Why why are we like this, Coop? How are they gonna how are we gonna be like the two nerdiest fools in like in East San Jose and quote fucking three six mafia like we're fucking hella hard? Because we are hella hard, dude. You're true. You're right. You're too sweet. Sure. Too sweet. Like wrestling, too sweet. No, dude, so, but like we got to be tough because, you know, the world's tough, Danny. And, you know, if we want to be like these weak-willed simpletons, then how are we going to get through our days? Listen, I'm going to quote the great and famous Lil Yachty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's strike one, that's one yeah. and two right there. Yeah, Let me quote that definitely three, is little- two strikes at once. <laughs> Let me let me quote the great little Yachty. He once said, um, you need to get the hell off the streets if you can take the heat because it gets cold like Minnesota. And you know what? He's real. You know, the he's, streets are the streets are fucking cold like Minnesota sometimes. Yep. I mean, damn, you didn't even have to throw the word rapper in there. That's Mine, a poet. Yeah. That was the voice of a generation. <laughs> Well, the fuck? Give this man a Grammy already. God oh, damn it. God, might as well. I'm just but, glad Machine Gun Kelly didn't get one. Wow. Yeah. He thought he was going to get one. He got hella butthurt too. Yeah. I mean, Dude. I get it though. He's a white guy that didn't get what he wants. Yeah. I, it's relatable. No, I'm kidding. No, but it's... uh. <laughs> but, you know, he's just like, dude, really? Come on. You're not like Paul Simon, dude. You're not like... You're not going to be able to go and do something and and do and be great at it. Like there's so many few there's so few many so few people that can do that and that's why they're who they are. That's why John Mayer 
is John yeah. Mayer. And by the way, uh, out of obsession, I've been listening because of the solo and just the song in general to Last Train mm-hmm. by John Mayer. Yeah. Last Train Home? Yeah. But the ballad version? Oh. Okay. Where he's in the studio? It, it's mm-hmm. just the guitar solo on that song is just No, John amazing. John Mayer's the fucking shit, dude. John Mayer's the man. Um I remember like being blown away. I mean, he was always a magnificent like musician. Yeah. But you never really I never gave him credit because the first like John Mayer shit I've ever heard was like the poppy, like your yeah. body's a fucking wonderland and shit. So you never give him like any credit, especially like this is a time where we're fucking listening to like metalcore and we're fucking really into like the freaking heavier shit. Um, but it wasn't until a couple years ago they were doing some like special thing for the Beatles on CBS, and um, John Mayer came out with somebody else. Like, it doesn't even matter who else, but they did a cover of um, "Don't Let Me Down" and um, by the Beatles. And um, that fucking cover, just him singing it, because the song's very blue, uh, very bluesy already. Yeah. So it was just right up John Mayer's alley, and he fucking killed it, and it sounded so fucking good. Well, so to go with what you're saying, I I was um, I was on a YouTube rabbit hole, and it was uh-huh. at least entertaining, but because sometimes it's terrible. Yeah. It's almost like the way people talk about one night stands. I, mm-hmm. I've never had one, but. The way people talk about how it's like, oh, what the fuck? Did, why did I do that? So, you yeah. know, you feel that. I feel that with YouTube searches. And then, but this one was cool because it was a Sammy Hagar interview with John Mayer. And uh, they were both kind of nerding and geeking out about each other, which was kind of fun. But John yeah. was kind of like making the whole point about how his first two Grammys were Your Body is a Wonderland was his first one off the first record. His second one was Daughters. He even said he's all those songs I didn't even put all my work into. Like they weren't my favorite songs. They were my least favorite songs on the records. Mm-hmm. Um and he started to realize that his audience was just becoming, you know, it was mostly women and and he he was like, Okay, I got one this is like the rule of threes. Like, I got one more shot and this is pretty much gonna define who I am. So like I if I do this again, like I'm that guy. Like I'm yeah. sealing my fate. So then you put out five. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Room five for and the then rest you're going to just life. have to turn into EDM out of nowhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, <clears throat> God, they're kind of like pulling a cold play. But anyway. Um, Low blow, bro. I, yeah, Ouch, you know baby. what I mean, though. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate them as musicians, but they kind of switched up. But let's be real. Let's be real. Let's huh? be honest. Oh, they're, I mean, cold play is be honest better. sometimes. Yeah, you but... Damn, what was I saying? I was on a roll, and then I fucking I'm fell sorry. off like butter. The rules of three. Rules best, of three. So then, he, chance, yeah. so then Continuum came out, and that's the one that had, there was a lot more bluesy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it even had the Hendrix cover on it. Uh, but he said, he's like, I just want to do, you know, I, I did blues, and then, and, then, and then I'm not a huge fan of his folk stuff, but I want to go back and check it out, because he even said, you know, I took, a, I took a tangents, I took some tangents, and people didn't like it. But he's like, but I just want to do what I want to do. So, dude, this Sob Rock record that he's just put out, like, last year or this year, because I think it was supposed to come out 2020, um, mm-hmm. it's it's just, like, one of his best works, probably, for me. But it's yeah. also funny because it's kind of a meme album. Like, it's supposed to be dad rock 90s. Like, mm-hmm. so I'm like, dude, okay, so think of, like, Limp Biscuit with dad, what was that, dad vibes? With, um, I mean, that's one yeah. song. But, like, it's like that, but, like, good 90s not just like funny silly dumb like it's like damn but it's like this sounds like 1993 you know like i'm like dude this is fucking good dude it's sick like it's just hella claptony and i know you don't like eric clapton but it's hella Mm claptony um 90s solo it's it's just good i think you dig it though i'll check it out dude you should check out last last train home ballad version okay and that's on his newest album yeah but you Watch the video because he's in the studio and it's cool. It's like okay. a live studio performance and they got all the people mm-hmm. playing instruments. So yeah. it's kind of tight. Yeah. I always like seeing that. I was like seeing like different musicians play live and like mm-hmm. in the studio and they bring in like different friends and different people from like different genres. I'm surprised like you haven't told me that fucking Dave Grohl is in one of the videos or something doing this shit. I'm there. happy he isn't. Because he's overused right now, in my opinion. He, I like, he's, he, he's definitely he's, everywhere. He's we, Kevin Hart of of uh, of rock right now. 
Dave, girl, you, you need to like take a two month uh, off. It's too please. much, dude. I'm getting this oversaturated right now. He's like Melissa McCarthy. I'm over it too. Oh God. <laughs> I told I told Steph I'm all. Oh, don't just look. I like her, but just yeah. find someone. Let's just there's <laughs> plenty of chubby cute girls out there that yeah. need work. She she's also, been syndicated twice. She's good. And you know what? You know who I also throw in there, and I love this artist, but Travis Barker. It's just well, sit down, bro, please. Yeah, but do you mean that before the Kardashian bullshit, or 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 just n- or now? I think is before because he was doing like he did. He produced the MGK. He was producing the different like artists oh, he was with like Yellow Wolf for a little bit. Yeah, Yellow Wolf. Yeah, yeah exactly. And fucking. Um, I, like I'm with that too. Just, yeah, he is kind of an I, over. He, yeah, he like any new up and coming pop punk, which is like because uh, I know this sounds like a fucking lame ass no. period right now, but no, I like it's it. not even pop punk. You know, it sounds it's like the new like the new sound of pop punk, like uh, whatever. Well, yeah, because we're like, like sound. And now pop punk's almost like classic rock. Oh, dude, bro, you know how much it sucks driving to work every day. And mind you, I already feel old going to work because these kids, like, they just don't understand the references, uh, I'll say, every now and then. So I already feel old. Yeah. And as I'm driving to work, I'll listen to, like, 98.5, the local, like, classic rock mm-hmm. station. And they'll put, like, fucking Lit, My Worst Enemy. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I was in high school when that song came out. Yeah. Like, or, like. Your classic. Like, yeah. With more classic rock. And for then, Danny you know, Betancourt, for you, Danny. Here's you old here's, fuck. <laughs> you old fuck. <laughs> Grow the fuck up. Um, and it'll be fucking. Uh, you know, it'll be that shit. And then like it'll be fucking Weezer with like saying so or, or like, hash pipe. That'd be cool. hash pipe and yeah or hash pipe. And I'm like nope, nope, nope. That's the first. Nah, uh. No, no, no. The first song I got high to was Beverly Hills by Weezer. Really? That's a good song. Yeah, but um, it was heroin. It wasn't weed. It was weed? Oh, no, it was heroin. It was weed. You sure it wasn't uh, Angel Dust? A little PCP. A little PCP. You oh, yeah, dude. There, fucking poop. I was biting my own face off at the end of the night. <laughs> nah, dude, but I just feel old. And <laughs> if we have anybody who listens, oh, I'm sorry, let me phrase that. If we have anybody who <laughs> that works. That sounded hilarious, yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Uh, if, if we have anybody who listens to us who works or have a connection at a, a classic rock radio station, um, can we change the rule from 20 years to like 30 years? I think after 30 years, I'll allow it to be called classic rock. Yeah, I think so too, because yeah. I don't, plus it's just not good enough yet. Like 20 you know, years, really? And you don't miss it enough. Things it's, is classic rock now. Come on, bro. Yeah, and you don't miss it enough because it's still already. It's been fucking beating over everyone's head. Yeah, so. it's been Let like it disappear for a little while. You know? Yeah, listen, everybody needs to stop playing fucking smells like Teen Spirit and like In Bloom, <sighs> and and let it like not play it for like ten years and then play it back or like yeah, like lock it in a fire. fucking vault like a compact deposit and we, no one can visit it for 10 years and then just unleash hell again yeah like uh, can we because i feel like it never got old because like for the past what 30 years of my life that i've been listening to this genre of music i've heard fucking smells like teen spirit i've heard fucking everlong by foo fighters i've heard fucking i still love rooster, everlong you know and rooster and rooster and fucking the the rusty cage or whatever i'm gonna break my I'm going to tell you right now, the only song I want to get rid of is Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not a Nirvana guy, though. I, I'm a Nirvana <laughs> guy, but I don't feel like the things is too much Nirvana. Well, and, and the same one. It's like, it's only Nevermind, and, you know, it's like, come on. Yeah. Like, like dude, I I've it. heard, you know what, I'm going to throw a deep one out there. Like, what was it, in the Muddy Banks of the Wizka or whatever? Uh-huh. Was that one of their live records? Yeah, I think that was one. Yeah, bam! I just dropped some knowledge. I don't even like you know, Nirvana that much. Boom! You know I know some one, stuff. My Nirvana song I really, really enjoy a lot is um, uh, "Drain You." Is that off now, the first one? It's also off. Nirv- it's also off. Never mind. But it's like track number six or seven. So it's like deep in there. But I think this is one, one of the ones that was on your list, right? Yeah. 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 
That um, means I didn't check it out. What a bad friend. You're a fucking asshole. I'm a it's fucking, okay. I'm a bad person. But yeah, Draining is freaking, it's a good song. But yeah, I, I, I feel like, can we stop playing, can we please stop playing Sublime on the radio? I'm okay with it. I, I like them, and I know you don't, but I'm still okay with it because just like Nirvana, it's the same fucking thing. It's always, uh, it's always, Santeria. uh, yeah, but, uh, more or less, definitely Santeria, but more or less, what was the other one too? What I got, what I got, uh, the bad way or the wrong way. I like that um, one, but yeah, the um, the, what's that one? The uh, it's just because I like this. I like the lyric. Then I'm staring at her tits. It's the wrong way. Yeah, now so it's relatable. <laughs> now here's the thing, dude. Um, for me, like I love. I used to like Sir Blime, like when I was in sixth or seventh grade, when the singer was still alive before he fucking died. Damn, dude, you're hella hipster. Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> like, um, I fucking listened to that dude when Bradley was still in the band. Bradley was still alive, dude. <laughs> I still remember hearing the news that he died. I'm like, oh shit, that's cool. I guess whatever. I mean, I already um, listened to him, so I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Um, Are you over, I, I rem- dude? I don't care. You no, know, I remember freaking picking up "Summertime" and "The Living's Easy." You know. So, so what you're saying is you're bitter that Bradley left you. I'm not bitter. I'm it just, just seemed, I'm pissed off that they always, they, it's been the same three sublime songs that they've been playing on the radio. Well, because he, he's immortalized. Cause yeah, he, got, he died then. He I'm died with you though. But no, they the didn't have to play the like same growing. fucking three songs. I think he died because he died as the band was blown. No, up. that's not a good excuse. Cause you could say the same about Nirvana. They put out as many records probably. Maybe. Nirvana did died. three. He died at like ninety seven or ni- ninety nine. Yeah, or it was ninety seven. Yeah. So yeah, so ninety eight maybe. Bradley, not because Cobain died in ninety six, right? Or was it ninety? Yeah, ninety six or ninety four. Yeah, I, I don't think know, it's ninety five actually when he died. Yeah, when Cobain died. Um. Um. Yeah, I'm with. I'm cool with that too. You gotta just play the B sides. Let's learn a little more about these records yeah. that we love so much. You know, if you love yeah, Nevermind, play the other songs off Nevermind on the radio. Yeah. You know, but the problem is, is they, they want to, well, they're owned by, you know, whatever. And then, you know, clear channel or whatever. And then they're just going to be like, well, this is the music we want you to listen to. So here you go, Mm -hmm. stupid people. But nowadays we're not, we don't have to be stupid because we have Spotify, YouTube. I I will admit this. I've have been listening to the radio a lot lately specifically like in the morning or if I'm going to do like a short drive. Yeah. Like I'll listen to like the look like couple of stations here and there, or like right now they have the Christmas station on 96.5. KOIT. Yeah. So I'll listen to that for like the quick runs. But if I know I'm going to do like be running errands and like, yeah, I put in like a mix or I put in like a full on album and you know, I, I keep it like that. Nice. But also my Spotify has been like, is an asshole because they remind it basically is telling me that I've been listening to the same genre of music for like the past 20 years. So, what it tell me, my like it was telling me my top genres is like pop punk, metal core, metal pop, you know, it's like shit that I really listen to. And, and I'm like, yeah, I don't need this kind of hatred on me right now. I don't need this on me right now, Ricky Bobby. What, what, what do you mean, hatred? Well, I mean, I know I've been listening to, like, the same genre of music for, like, the past couple of years. So I don't need, like, Spotify to tell me that I'm listening to the same, you know, five genres of music over and over. But you sure but sense. you clicked the thing that said, here's the information of what you've been listening to for the last I year. I did. So, you know what? I kind of, I, I was kind of, I, I kind of had it coming. You make it sound like they showed up to your house in the middle of the night with a gun to your head. <laughs> And they're like, play the fucking rapped right now. Play it. Play it, asshole. Play, admit it. Watch admit it. every fucking slide of this goddamn rapped. You know, I will tell you that it was a lot of slides. I enjoyed yeah, mine. Unnecessarily. But unnecessarily. Unnecessary. The teenage girl in me enjoyed it. And the hater in me understood why it's stupid. But then I still, I appreciate it more than I hate it. Because as a paying, as a paying customer... And a monthly subscriber to Spotify. Mm-hmm. I will say that I expect that from them. Um, I heard the Apple Music one is completely terrible. 
I and have Steve Jobs yet. just, I think he wrote things into the company when he died, and he's like, I want you guys to fucking make crappy phones and shitty things and then still be like, yeah, we're the best. Mm. And, you know, because their computers are doing good, but I don't know, dude. Are the phones still as elite as they used to say they were? Even to I Apple mean, standards? I have an Apple phone, so I'm not going to, like, run the parade, but it's like, sorry. I mean, how do you feel right. about it? I mean, I've been using Apple for like the past three or four years already where yeah. I forgot how it was to be an Android user. It but is like different. every feature that the Apple is doing now, like Android already had it like two or three years. So, yeah, well, exactly. So that's my other issue with Apple is even as a because I'm an Apple computer user and mm-hmm. I will say they need to come up with more features when they come up with shit like. They sometimes they just release new shit and you're like, what's the difference? Yeah. You're like, oh, well, it's 13,000. It's 13,000. It's 1300 dollars more than the last one. That's the difference. Oh, oh, oh but it's got a, it's got an, a, a fingerprint on, uh, on all four corners. No. Like, I don't need that. Okay. Just give me no. something that works. I think, um, Fucking yeah. And, and I've been on the fence to buying a new Apple like laptop to do like my music stuff. But like, like I'll see my brother. He has a brand new one. It doesn't even have a fucking USB connection. You have to buy like a separate adapter so you can get some fucking USBs. Oh wait, hold on. It's mine's got USB Cs on it, which I actually like because everything's kind of USB C right now. Is that how yours brother's is? Uh, it, because it, I know it, the new to, new ones are are going to back like to a, the magnet thing. You have to buy like a specific like. Uh, adapter, and then the adapter gives you like three or four port, like USB ports. Yeah, I got it. I got to uh, see which one because I know the new yeah. new one is like the magnet one. They're changing the power thing. They're changing the power the back power to how it used to be. Because uh-huh. right now the power supply is you get a USB cable and you plug it in to the wall yeah. adapter, which is amazing. Yeah, I'm like, thank you for being universal and not forcing us to fucking. Buy fucking proprietary bullshit. Yeah. Is that the right word? Proprietary? Uh, you, you're asking the wrong person. You're asking the wrong well, person, dude. On this one. Well, speaking of that? strengths, <laughs> this week we're covering <laughs> strengths. I figured that's part of it. Uh, and then overused words and phrases that make you sound like a little bitch. No, that make you sound weak or a little bitch. Um Either so or. I figured we'd jump into the positive real quick. I mean, both are positive, but I figured we'd do the little fun little brainstorm of what we have for our strengths. Mm-hmm. Not, I mean, there's nothing to really dissect. Neither of us are psychologists, um, so it's kind of like a little banter <laughs> moment. Just yeah. a little fun back and forth, I figured, right? Yeah. So I think it's better to like just go... We're obviously not going to want to go one. One, I do one, you do one. That's fucking ridiculous. No one's yeah. going to sit here and listen to that. So I figure I'm just going to roll mine off. We could talk and laugh about them. Okay. Um, but you know what, maybe? So we don't just obsess about mine. Let's both, let's read ours. I'll read mine, then we laugh. You read yours, and then and then we go in on each other. Okay. Or we elaborate. So that way it's like everyone gets a fair shot of of expressing what they're talking about. So it's not just I I talk about four things you have as well. Uh huh. I think that might be a little bit better. Okay. Because we might have overlapping strengths. Yeah. So, so my strengths I put and and you know what, I didn't get twenty down. I tried, but I think I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, so, that's gonna be more. That's gonna be more than me. You'll receive. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. It, I, I, it said twenty. Um, uh-huh. I did half. An overachiever's half. Um. How's your grading curve, Danny? No, I'm kidding. Um, So I wrote down as my strengths uh, loyalty. (laughs) This feels so like vain sometimes, but Mm -hmm. loyalty, uh, deep thinker, drawing, conversing, music knowledge. This next one could be a strength or an excuse, depending on what you're talking about. Passionate. Opinionated, which I think is a strength. It may be annoying. Educating others on my opinions is definitely a strength. 
sarcasm, and trivia. Oh. Yeah, I didn't... I probably have more, but those are the ones that really just kind of popped at me. You know what's funny, dude? Okay, first off, this is why I love you, Coop, because we both, like, have the same mentality. Like, coming up with this list, we're like, I don't... Like, we love talking about ourselves, but when we put on the spotlight, we don't like to talk about ourselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like we like talking. Fucking, I like talking. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, well, look at me. I do this. I do that. Tell me but about it. A lot it. of things that you said on your list, like, I definitely also have them. Um, but I want you to read your list because I, I want to I wanna believe you, Danny. I don't want you to just be like, oh, man, we're twins. You, okay. you said everything 20, I said. Twinning and winning. So I put honest, loyal. Um, I, I didn't want to. I, I put well rounded, but instead of saying no, like but well, well rounded was when I also said. Uh, I said the, one of those I hated too, but don't worry about but, it. It's true. Like, There's I truth to, say, to it. I wanted to say educated, but well, no, you, put, you said it's okay. It's okay. I mean, well rounded is a strength, but what do you mean by that? So like, yeah, educated. I, so you're happy you're accomplished and an educated person. And and I feel like I'm very informed with certain topics. I think that's like, I, yeah, okay. That yeah. makes now that makes sense. Yeah. I, I put I put artists. <laughs> I mean, dude, you're in a band. You can put that. <laughs> but uh, you know me, Coop. I, I don't like to but yeah, I put artists. Dude, we have a fucking podcast. This is art. Like Yeah. If people yeah. want to pay for um, it. So put I put artists. Put musical, which I don't really consider myself that great of a musician, but I am in a recording band, so sure. Oh, well, people like playing with you, so I would say you're musical. I do. Shout out to my homie Ray once again. He's there you somewhere. go. There you go. Confirm I, it, Ray. Um, I, I put um, musical. I also put... Um, I don't know. I didn't know how to describe it, so I just put like a scenario. But um, <laughs> it might be just, like just loyal. say what you wrote. At this point, you got to just say it. I, I put um, <laughs> we'll always stand up for the right thing. Okay. So I don't know. Yeah, that's like I don't know. Like it's like not just brave. It's more like. What are, yeah, I know what you mean, though. I had some bullying inc- incidents last week with some of my students. Like, they were, like, I had a specific um, event or a specific incident where one of my students was attacked and was um, throwing homophobic slurs at him. Um, so, like, I jumped into action. He came up to me. He's like, hey, this is what just happened. I didn't even check in with the student. I'm like, fuck that. So I went like searching for blood. We got the students who, who threw the homophobic um, slur at the student. It wasn't just like a one-time thing. It was like multiple occasions where like they yeah. were harassed the student over and over. Um, So we finally got one in trouble. So I'm like, I felt good about myself about, you know, standing up. And you know what? It, it kind of goes with like our whole like musical route of like, being with like metal and like hardcore was like like we joke around, but like if you if you intentionally intentionally like try to create a harm to somebody, like that's where we stand up and like we yeah we Intervene. we start to yeah yeah. I put family oriented. Also, I feel like I'm very family oriented. Oh yeah. And then my last strength was was chill, chill, chill dude. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That's that's all I got. You can. I'm pretty sure you can gas me up some more. You have a strong brow. I do. I gotta shave him, dude. No, I mean the brow line, but I didn't. I wasn't looking at the brows themselves. Are they? Are they big? Yeah, I get. I, I get long ear hair. That sucks. Really? I never. I have no hair, bro. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I'm enjoy a it while it lasts. Yeah. But I don't think you get more hair when you get older. I think you do, but maybe you don't. I like I have no chest hair. Like it's kind of cool for tattoos. Yeah, it is. Like very little underpit hair. My tattoo uh, artist always thinks I shave my leg right before I went to get tattooed or something because I have no leg. But somebody was telling me that the reason that a lot of people, specifically like Mexicans, are not very hairy is because it's the indigenous blood in us. Like I guess like not having a lot of like facial hair and body hair is like 
is something that in this well, based people, on your climate yeah. where you you're uh native to an area that's not super cold right so it's that like all the, all the hairy people are mostly from like Europe, you know? Yeah, that makes sense because it's a lot colder there. Well, I was checking the temperature for my hometown in Mexico mm-hmm. and it was like 90 fucking degrees, 95. Yeah, dude, like, yeah, there's no reason that. for back hair. In December. <laughs> no need for that <laughs> fucking type of hatred. I here. have hair everywhere, daddy. <laughs> yeah. So those are, my, those are my strengths, but I feel like there's a lot of things there that we... Um, you're definitely more than three. I just want to throw yeah. that out there. So yes, yes. Yeah. No. Um, also I feel like a lot of things we do have in common, like we, we will fucking die on our fucking hill if we strongly believe in something and we're very, very opinion, opinionated. On yeah. Things. And if we're very passionate about things, like when you say passionate, I'm like, Oh yeah, I should put that. Um, but like, especially when it comes down to something we're super passionate about, we will fucking, we'll go down swinging rather yeah. than admit. We're very stubborn people also, Coop. Ooh, stubbornness. That is, a, yeah. is that a strength? I should I mean, have put pride because that's where you, that's the positive side of stubbornness. Well, it, you would I think say it's pride, right? Stubbornness isn't so bad because sometimes you're so like dedicated. I guess dedicated is the best way. Ah, there you go. Because, dedicated. Because sometimes better. when we're so dedicated on something, we will like, not stop until we're like the fucking masters of it or like we know everything but i also it. think it's mostly because we probably think we're right and they're wrong yeah which i think is also survival so you should listen to that yeah yeah what if they are wrong a lot of people are wrong it's okay to be wrong it is except for us because i'm not gonna wrong. follow you up the up the hill you know no. what i mean nope nope um yeah dude before we get into the overused words and phrases. I do want to say that I'm happy we did this exercise because it's kind of important for us to remind ourselves of what we're doing right and what we're good at because yeah. it's easy to get annoyed and pissed off and hate things, you know? Yeah. Especially last week. So it's like, it's nice to have something to kind of like force us into saying, you know, it like, I love you, you know, in the mirror kind of shit. Yeah, I won't do that, but um, <laughs> but like you know, you know what I mean, like a little pep talk, a little nice little little warm up for the soul. See, I, I can't do the pep talk to myself in the mirror because I always think about Dirk Diggler, yeah, <laughs> Boogie Nights. You know, yeah, that's why I was like, my mind goes there every time I think about it. But oh, yeah, yeah like, I, I think it's a good, it's a good thing to always focus on some positives rather than like over dwell on the negative. Yeah. Cause I feel like once we start focusing more on our positive side of our lives and what we do um, and what we're capable of, I think that's where we start making a change within ourselves. Oh yeah. And you start yeah. seeing things from a more um, optimist, real like, perspective yeah. because everything we think is happening is more surreal than real. You know, it's, yeah. it's an exaggerated version of the truth. Yeah. Um, and god damn it Coop we deserve some fucking confidence yeah I think yeah we need to reign confidence I think we, we need to start because the only way this even this project I mean the only way reason it's gotten better is because we've gotten a lot a little more oomph in our step you know yeah it's a lot more together than it used to be I wouldn't say we're arrogant but we're definitely we know what the fuck we're doing we're aware yeah, we're aware. We're aware of who we be. We know who we be, homie. So yeah. watch out, world. Don't we're come stepping. We're coming out, homie. Man, I had to put... People are crazy. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. I do want to get into um, the fact that we we say a lot of words and phrases that make us sound uneducated, weak, not confident, Kind of like what we were just talking about, like how we need to pep ourselves up, right? Mm-hmm. And I know everyone's guilty of this. A lot of people would think like ums, and and I also noticed that. So, and I know some of the the uh, ways around that is to just take pauses, right? So I've been working on those because I don't like doing that. Mm-hmm. Um is um is a tough one, but I'm still working on it. 
Uh, so, uh, so I just replaced it with a. Uh. Moving right along, I'm going to start the first one off. So uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Now, so it'd be like, okay, like Billy Corgan, he's got a bald head, but he still writes good music. Does that make sense? And then you'd no. be like, absolutely not. But what to say yeah. instead should have been, what are your thoughts? And you know what's funny is that actually makes a little more sense. But the, yep. but the reason for that is not because of my poor example with Billy Corgan. It's because the point of that is, you you know, would you like to put input on this? Instead of saying, like, does it make sense? You're already putting the thought out there that you're not making sense. That, it's, you're, it's, that you're wrong. Exactly. You're, thing. It's like, you know, people say don't jinx it. You're like saying, hey, does that make sense? Because I'm normally, uh, I'm unsure whether or not I've been making sense lately. That's yeah. what that kind of sounds like, you know? Um... There's um. look, I agree with that, but I think when I use that phrase, the uh, does that make sense? Is because sometimes, like, for me, the way my mind works is it's kind of hard to sometimes like put, um, like especially if I'm like right if I'm just speaking out if I'm just speaking out, it for me is like hard to kind of express myself with like the actual words I want to use and like the actual tone and everything. Like, I, I feel much comfortable sometimes, like, writing down what I want to say because you can erase, you can pick your words that you want to yeah. use and really emphasize on, like, certain things. So when I'm saying it, it's not that I'm getting confused myself. It's just that here in my mind, it makes sense what I want to say and what I want to do. But when I project it because of either my, you know, this learning disabilities or my speaking disabilities or setbacks or whatever, um, it, sometimes I don't communicate what I want to say um, properly, but in my head it makes sense. So when I use that sense, it's like, does that make sense? It's not that, it's not even does that make sense. It's like, do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's mostly going, like, I'm. this is what I'm trying to do, but sometimes I don't communicate. And it's not like, I understand what the fuck I'm saying. I know I'm right, but did you kind of understand what I'm trying to say with my non, with my random rambling kind of thing? That's what that's where that's when I use that um that phrase. Well, yeah, but do you think that's correct? To use that phrase? Yeah. Um or beneficial. Why'd you have to go fucking deep on me, asshole? Why'd you well no, well that's the whole point of this exercise, Danny, is you're supposed to change your shit. Like you're basically like, no, I do this, and I'm like, yeah, that's good, and you're not supposed to, because what you're doing is you're Re, you're reconfirming your your insecurities to this person that probably one mm -hmm. didn't ask any of that, and two, no. Well, think about it. It's like it yeah. comes off like I'm oversharing and I'm unconfident, and that's not really. Um, I don't think that's what you're trying to put out there. No. So what I'm saying is like the whole point of this is we're saying like, look, we're doing this, but if we want to make ourselves seem a little more, you know, confident and just less like aware of our shit because i think the whole point with communication is like no one's perfect but like the goal of it is to get better each and every day so mm -hmm. like if we can get better at it like we shouldn't be always saying like oh well this is like how it is you know it's like well no well then correct it like and part of correcting it would just be to be like like you said like or like like it says on here like what what are your thoughts and then maybe they could say, well, I was confused on what you meant about this because they'll say that. But that way yeah. you're not just because they're going to tell you like if someone's confused when you say something, they're definitely going to ask you a follow up question for clar if clarifying but, questions and it, shit. Yeah, exactly. But this way you're not just painting a picture. You're 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 um, you're not like well thought you're, you're not like smart and it's not saying yeah. you're dumb, but it's like, yeah, I doubt myself. Like, you don't want to be, like, that person. You know, you want to give off the vibe, like, I'm confident with what I'm saying, but is this getting through to you, you know? I guess that that, that makes sense. That makes sense. you don't want to shoot mean, yourself down, you know? Yeah, you don't want to, like, be all vulnerable and, like, being honest and speaking your truth just for at the very end to be, like, does that make sense? Or, like, oh. Exactly, because like, th yeah. that's a good point, too. It might come off, not that you are, but it might to some people – in some circumstances it might come off phony. They could be like, well, why are you putting on this front? Like you want to change things, but then you literally are just like, yeah. Oh yeah. But never mind that. Cause 
I suck. But yeah. I do the same thing, but that's why I thought this was an interesting article because it's I think everyone does this shit. And mm-hmm. I think it would be nice if we, I don't have a problem with slang, but I have a problem with like overused bullshit, you know, like yeah, if it's well put together, like slang is cool and like whatever it is, you know, whatever, as long as it's funny. But I just I've always taken pride in knowing like I could communicate like or I want to communicate as best I can. Yeah, because I mean, I think everything in life is easier when you know how to communicate properly. Because mm-hmm. everything you need to get done will get done more efficiently. And everyone will mostly understand what you're talking about. You know, so it's like, yeah. it's good to kind of get that tool sharpened, if you will. Um, yeah. But, well, that was fun. Then my Google alert. Um, that was loud. It didn't even pop up on my screen. So that's cool. Oh, there it is. That was, that was loud for no reason. Was it super loud on your end? I heard it too. Um, but it might have been like that yeah, your microphone picked it up or something. No, it's because of stupid uh oh maybe. Oh no, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, um did you want to take on Moving the next on. one? Move around yeah, here. The, so the next overused words or phrase is maybe we should try. Instead of saying maybe we should try. Uh, we should say, let's try, or it's a good idea to try. And for me, I, I think that's a really good, um, that's good, because maybe we should try is giving that person the option. And if you say, let's try, or it's a good idea to try, it's like you, you're more assertive. You're more confident of what you're trying to do. Right. And you're not giving, and if it's like something you're very, like, that you have your heart set to try or like, cause I, I see this like when it comes down to like picking up food, like mm-hmm. picking the places where you want to go eat, like, Oh, maybe we should try this place or should we try this place? It's like, no, let's try Let's try this restaurant over here. And then you're going to be like, go. yeah, I want to go. Cause you sound like you've been there before. Yeah. If you're saying maybe it's like, are, is, are you going off a second opinion? Like what? Yeah. Or like, maybe? you're not really confident about this place again. Like, like well, you know they're, they're they have a conditional pass. Mm-hmm. No, like, is that from the health department? <laughs> they got a B plus rating, yeah. which is still passing. No, but I, I feel like as I'm looking at this list, a lot of it has to do with like confidence. Is you have to say things with confidence and be yeah. not maybe assertive about it, but very confident and very like um yeah, maybe assertive is sure of what you're saying, like yeah, confident. You're con- you're very conf- you're confirming your your confidence. Yeah, you know, like you're very sure. like this is this is fact. I'm not just asking you. Like this is how I feel, and how do you feel? Like I think mm-hmm. it's just kind of interesting. Like it's way plus. Here's here's another thing. Do, do your do your part. Does your partner listen to this podcast? Um, occasionally, I guess. That's kind of awkward to ask right before I ask this question. What I'm going to yeah. say is this is a very good Earmuffs. skill to have <laughs> in general as a man. Mm-hmm. Because a woman will find you more attractive if you can communicate better. Because they value communication probably almost more. I mean, I love communication, but I notice that. Though, like When you can communicate properly, a woman will respect you a lot more. Because I right. think... They over the the way a man looks at a woman, we say they overanalyze and they and they obsess about things. Well, it's like then if you can do one thing well, then they're gonna be like, Oh, okay, well he's very, you know, like controlled. I don't know, girls like when we're like disciplined, I guess is the word. It's a hey, someone has to get their shit together. Someone needs to have the shit together on this. And and it sounds kinda like whipped, but what I mean is like you, it's, not even it's not whipped. It's like basically what I'm saying is um, it's like you're just a, like kind of like on the realm of like what you're saying about education. You know, like, do you want to be a guy that drools all day or do you want to be someone who knows how to write? You know, like, yeah, I'd rather be the dude who knows how to write, you know, that, that everyone's like, fuck that guy and his quill pen. Yeah. <laughs> I like um, I like there's been occasions where I'm like, hey, let's go have dinner on Wednesday. Like, hey, let's grab dinner Wednesday. And partner would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
where do you want to go? And as I'm like, as she's asking where I want to go, Shuri, Shuri has like a location already looked up on Yelp. Like Shuri knows where she wants to go. Like, yeah. So I'm like, at sometimes like, why do I even, why am I even going to try ask if you're, I'm going to throw something in there and you're going to be, um, yeah, but maybe we should try this <laughs> instead. And then, you know, what um, if you start yelling out random things? I'm just going to start like saying kitty litter Bell for everything. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to start saying Taco Bell. Cause I know regardless, it's never going to be Taco Bell. It's going to be somewhere else. Or say, yeah, say something hella crappy. <laughs> so it's obvious you're over the fucking, I don't want to pick. You want to go to hometown? Like, want to go to hometown? Oh, we get doggy bags. They don't even let. I, they don't let you take the fucking food home. No. You want to go uh, Golden Corral? Huh? Go Golden Sizzler? Corral. We'll fucking go Sizzler, dude. By the way, Sizzler is steps above Golden Corral. You know, I've I cannot remember when's the last time I went to Sizzlers. It's been a while for me, but I'll tell you this: Golden Corral is complete and utter garbage food. It is, is it? for garbage people. And mm-hmm. when you go there, you see garbage people and not okay. the people with like the uniforms. I'm talking like, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the Walmart people. Yeah. <laughs> Those people. Dude, they're so um, gross. Oh. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been to Golden Corral, so I can't really like, also, same thing. I can't it didn't really... help that I was in like Modesto. Mm-hmm. Why would you go Modesto for fucking? Well, because you have one. So like, there is right a little there. story. Like I, it wasn't a destination. I was, I was in the area with. I was staying with a buddy over there. Because mm-hmm. th- there's no way I would ever fucking go out of my way. Because it was in the area. And I'm like, oh, I've never tried it at a buffet. Fuck it, let's see. Yeah. Oh, dude. Because I thought in my head, I'm like, it'll probably be like a Sizzler. And yeah. I don't even like Sizzler, but I was just like, eh, I could do it. It's cool. I'll get a cheap steak. Yeah. It was disgusting. It was like ground beef. and But no, dude, like I like, it was just shit. It was just terrible cafeteria food. You should never eat there. You know where I've, I haven't been in forever, and I honestly can, it has to be like over 15 years since I've been to one. Uh, Red Lobster. Yeah, and I don't miss it. Neither do I. I don't, I think the only thing... I understood. I, I thought it was good when I was a kid. But now that I've been to actual seafood places and I've eaten like in Monterey and Santa Cruz yeah. and stuff, I'm just like, dude, that is literally like McDonald's for seafood. Mm. But I will say the Cheddar Bay biscuits are pretty good, though. That's what I've been hearing, but it's been a while since I... But you can just make them nowadays. Yeah, you can get them in the freezer section. Yeah. Which I'm pretty sure is not the same thing, but still. It's not enough. quite, but then you don't have to tip anybody. That's true. That's nice. Yeah, that's always nice. You could order to go and not tip anybody, too. I kind of feel bad when I go. I feel, okay, I'm not going to lie, Coop. I feel bad when they show me the receipt and then it tells me, like, oh, would you like to tip? Or, like. Well, I put zero if, I, if I'm picking it up. The only person who did like anything when, was the cook. Yeah, that's and that's the reason why I leave it for the cook. Nah, fuck that. Um, and then like sometimes like, or like I'll pick up a burrito and then they'll flip the fucking keypad and be like, "Oh, are you gonna answer some questions for me?" It was just always like, "How much do you want to leave tip?" And of course, like I'll leave like twenty percent or fifteen percent, depending if it's to go. Ten, maybe twelve, fifteen percent. If is if I'm yeah. eating there is twenty. During COVID, I was doing tips on to go just to be like a good Samaritan. But I, it's not like that anymore. People aren't dying anymore. So people aren't like dying for not working. Like I did so much work on Thursday with production, you know, mm-hmm. here that I was doing research on things and looking up numbers and dude, oh my God, it's part of an episode we're going to do. So I don't want to reach too much into it, but it's the unemployment rate is super low right now. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's not, you know. Nothing like, oh, people are starving on the streets. Like, no more than they, less than they were before. And, um, yeah. But anyway, w- my point was, it's just like, there's no excuse, you know? Speaking of no excuse, uh, no excuses. Uh, three. There we go. I think this would. Now, what you want to say is, I believe this would. Hmm. Because just, like the other things we've gone over the last two two items here, 
it's mostly about what we're saying and what we're confirming with what we're saying. Now, you thinking about something, it's like, why are you telling us all about this hypothesis you have instead of telling us about something you actually, you know, put some work into, right? Yeah. So it's like, it's like if you're offering advice, it should be confirmed belief that this is good advice you're offering to this person. And it's like, Mm -hmm. obviously, you want to deliver good advice. So if you want to deliver the good advice, you should deliver it in a good way. Mm -hmm. Saying, I think, like, if you believe, because obviously you're going to, in your head, this was a good enough thing to say out loud, right? So you've already put this through the process of elimination in your brain, and that's why you're saying it out loud. So it's like, then you should also deliver it that way, you know? It's like, Mm -hmm. I believe this would work. Because if if someone tells you, you know, it's like leadership quality, right? You're like, okay, cool. I want to follow that person. I think that way would be better. Well, I believe this way, like even if they're wrong, just the way they're talking, it makes you feel like you're much more controlled, much more like sensible. So, okay, I think I want to like, I trust your word. It's convincing, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. I I mean, think and believe is pretty much like they're they're the same meaning, but I feel like believe is, is again, it's a more confident, more assertive. Um, well, here, here's uh, here's a way to here's word. a way to think about that. Do you think about God or do you believe in God? God damn it, you're right. You know, you're belief right. is something that's like disciplined. It's like almost you could say obsessive to some. Degree. I also once you once you explain that, it remind me of Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars uh, specifically, um, The Empire Strikes Back when um, when Luke is um, he, he goes and train with Yoda. And Yoda tells him to do something, and freaking Luke Skywalker's being a whining asshole. Yeah, time. Like, I can't do that. <laughs> you crazy. You know, like, like a oh, dumb green person. Asshole. Yeah, and so um, Yoda tells him like to use the use the use the force to like get something out. And stupid um, Luke goes, "I'll try." And then Yoda goes, "Do or do not. There is no try." Yeah. And that kind of remind me is like you either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it cuz if you say you're oh I'll try it means that you're already like giving your excuse for like an excuse for not trying or not trying your best or like yeah. to fail. Yeah, so you I, sound I, unsure. I, I agree with that. When I say I think is like it's giving you a chance to like not be so sure or like be persuaded one way or the other, but yeah. when you say I believe that's like no this is my this is my belief this is my thought and i i will die in this hill yeah. before i change my belief exactly and that and that like sounds that. better you sound more you sound more eloquent you sound more like i'm going to say it dude you sound a little more badass you know well come Thank in you, you want to take the reins you know what i mean like when you get into that in that teacher's position especially it's good to mm-hmm. be like it's good to be on your P's and Q's because those little bastards, man, they're ready to tear you apart, dude. Oh, just like we were. Just like we were. Oh, I know. I know that. And that's why I would be terrified. And, I, dude, I would get bullied all over again. You know how many <laughs> of those fucking Vato kids would be like, check out Mr. Cooper's eyes. I'm like, fuck you, kids, Ew. man. Watch it. You look, yeah, I'm fucking blind. Yeah, I know. I you know. like how I did Dicks. the East Los Angeles accent, and even though I grew up in San Jose. I still stereotype it, it, wrong. It have a fucking East Lowe's. Hey, 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 fool. Look at Cooper's eyes. Pull eh? my fucking They're hella down. <laughs> hey, look at this fool's fucking glasses. Eh? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. um, Hubble ass motherfucker. <laughs> fucking kids. No, kids can smell fear. Oh, dude. and once they smell yeah. fear. And if you start doing shit, like I think, I think rather than I believe like they will fucking walk over. Oh, yeah. And, we all gone through it as fucking teachers. We all gone through it. We all fucking gone a year or two through the fucking muds. And you're like, what the fuck am I even doing right now? Why am I, why did I choose this life? That's the truth about teaching. That's rough. <sighs> but that's why, it. but that's why, you know, that's why we're sharpening those blades. That's why you you're know? just ready to fucking die. I'm ready. I'm ready. I wish a freaking like, fucking kid would step up and try to be all vato with me. Yeah, and they're going to find out real quick. 
yeah. what it feels like to have your Cortez stepped on. She, I used to be freaking. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck you know about getting your Cortez stepped on when they were stuffed with freaking with freaking knee high socks? socks yeah. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, next one. Um, on the face is I'm not positive, but another one is I'm not sure, but. And uh, what you say instead is whatever you're going to say after, but so basically don't use, but so I'm not positive. And then just say, so maybe you should do this. It sounds like good. So say a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, just don't use, but it says you don't need to add disclaimers. Simply. If you start your right. sentence with, I know you might be, a, this might be a stupid question, but. You might want to say, I don't want to sound pushy, but you're undermining yourself. An easy rule that bears repeating, don't put yourself down ever. Right. So, like, I'm not sure, but I don't think you're doing it right. Yeah, so just just say, say, I'm not sure you're doing it right. Yeah, I'm not sure you're doing it right. Yeah. Or, yeah, and it sounds, like, more positive. Cause I think like you're just you're telling them you're 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 hiding behind what you want to say, you're pretending there's an like invisible cushion, shield. Though, yeah, exactly. It's like your cushion. Cause what if you're wrong? Then it's just gonna make you sound like the the bigger dumbass. Yeah, but you're 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 making you're um you're not really cushioning anything. You're just prefacing unnecessary. You're being redundant. Yeah, you're prefacing for no reason because there's no point to preface if you could just say it. Right. Yeah. It's like prefacing yeah. is important when you're writing because the words are in order. But mm-hmm. I mean, our thoughts, you know, like we have to communicate. So it's funny that, you know, I think like we just get in these like habits and I don't know where we get into them. And maybe it's TV. Maybe it's what we watch. Maybe it's what we've seen. And like we mock it because we absorb it. Cause I don't know what the hell else it could be. Or maybe it's our surroundings. Mm-hmm. But no, but, um, <laughs> but it, it's going to bother me cause it's just like the, um, thing I'm going to like catch it, but that's the point. I want to kind of red flag these little things. So it's not like an obsession, but it's just like, Hey, you know what? I know what I could say instead. And, and by the way, talking like this is also great for job interviews. Um, when you're networking with people, when you want to sell your, um, whatever you're selling to people, you know, this is very, very advantageous to have a skill that's good at communicating, especially when you want to sound eloquent. Like, like, yeah, I know it sounds like maybe to some people, like, why do I want to sound good when I talk to people? Because that's what I get emails like that. They say, why do I not want to sound good when I talk to people? And mm-hmm. the, the reason is, is you do want to sound good. So they don't think you're just going to work at Walmart for the rest of your life. And if and listen, here's the thing. I'm. When you're, especially like when you work in sales or something or like customer service, you don't want, if you ask for help, it is, you're very, very, very vulnerable when you go ask for help. So you want somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing. And if you come off like, oh, I'm not sure. It's just like, wow, oh, God, what the fuck am I even doing right now? You yeah. want that confidence. I think it's that reinsurance of, of the com- of confidence. Yeah. What's your input on that? I I I agree. Thank you. I I agree because it's just it's just there's no point to being redundant though. You know, it's for like sure. it gets boring. Let's save that for something else you could talk about. I'm gonna shoot through three at once because the thing I like about these is the solution is all the same. Okay. So I'm skipping it. one and I'm gonna do the three after. Plus, it's like you know. Tighten it up a little. Remember I said I wanted to tighten up production? I'm like, look, yep, yep. some of these were kind of, I could have combined them. So I'm going to shoot through these real quick. I got needless to say, all right? Uh-huh. In my opinion, mm-hmm. and for what it's worth. Now, for what it's worth, I believe, is a really good Crosby, Stills, Nash record. But anyway, mm-hmm. moving moving right along. Um Needless to say, in my opinion, for what it's worth, the solution and what to say instead is absolutely nothing because you shouldn't say them. Needless to say is silly because it's just, 
it's from some Anglo Saxon bullshit that's saying like you're not going to say something, but then you say it anyway. So that's stupid. It's like why are you playing cat and mouse with yourself? And then mm. in, in my opinion, it's kind of silly because it's like, dude, just once again, like we we're saying earlier, just why are you prefacing? Just just say what you need to say. Shout out to John Mayer. Say what you need to say. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, just get on with it. Life's short, dude. No one's listening to you stutter all day. Okay. No one wants to, <laughs> no one wants no to listen to you fucking, John. yeah, no one wants stuttering Stanley, all right? No one. And uh, for what it's worth, I mean, it's just, it's just silly, because you, you're just saying, like, it may not be worth much, but maybe it's worth a little to you, you know? Like, well, then don't say it then. Save yeah. your save your wooden nickel for someone else. Um. So that was fun. I got a little. I got a little uh, passionate on a couple of those because I was. Yeah, I was annoyed with bit. no one. <laughs> so yeah, um, the next one is. Uh, Sorry. No, the next one is numero cinco. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did I six through there. Eight. Oh yeah, okay. Numero cinco is. I just wanted to touch base. What you say instead is, "I want to touch bases." So you just when you get stop third with base. the just. How many times have you started an email with just wanted to ask you if the problem in this case is that the just is the softener, almost an apology, as if you're saying, I hate to bother you, but there's a time and place for that, but business communication generally isn't. I, okay, I agree with that. I agree because, yeah, I'll go ahead and say that I am a I'm uh, guilty of this. Yeah. Like where you kind of apologize to bother people. You don't want to be an inconvenience or like nag on people or well, like, well, this is how you read it. People. I just wanted to touch base. Yeah. Like, do, is that how you want to sound? Or do you just want to be like, I wanted to touch base. I guess I you sound kind of like a whiny adolescent. When I put the, I just want, I, yeah, I just want to touch base. It's like, Hey, I know you're busy. But do you when you have time? You sound like a servant, though. You're like, oh, yeah. I guess can you not wow, hit me with your shoe because right. it kind of sounds like you're like scared. You're wasting their time. Yeah, I guess so. And like, you shouldn't be scared you're wasting their time because you're also investing your time, Danny. You know what it is at the end of the day, dude? It's like you email these people um, <laughs> yeah, to I do know. their job. That's yeah. what it is. It's like you're yeah. you're really gonna this person's gonna get pissed off because you're just telling them, hey, you're not doing your fucking job. Like, and, and I get it. I get it. I, I, it is. I say this now with confidence when I damn well know tomorrow I'm going to write a fucking email or text. But you know what? It's, it's in your head now. Base. And that's the point. Yeah, I guess. Um, it's, it's but also the thing is like, Hey, it's business. Like, Hey, this has to be done. Exactly. Um, and when I, it goes back to like what this whole is basically like confidence, like the, the majority of these phrases and how to reuse them is by saying it with more confidence mm-hmm. and be more sort of like, Hey, when I just want, uh, I want to touch bases with you. When are you going to have this project completed? Because you're going to have, you you know, you're sending me back a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You know? And it's not we got, like we got that. Dead, we just, got that deadline coming up. Yeah. It's not like you're being a fucking dick. You're just like, Hey, you're taking forever. Um, Therefore, hurry up. <laughs> You're like, hey, yeah, uh, Cheryl. Yeah, hi. Um, hi, Bill. We, we needed that fucking uh, status report. I don't know shit. That was a, that was me pretending. Your status report? Yeah, I just I should have sent it earlier. Wow. I'll send it later. Sh- she'll get it. Um, wow. You remember the wave? No. Yeah. Yeah. Back to Nueve. Sorry, Surrey, or Surrey if you're Canadian. What to say instead would be excuse me. And that makes sense to me because I, I catch people sometimes at my job over apologizing. And I tell them, mm-hmm. kind of like what I tell my kid. I mean, I tell my son when he used to say sorry a lot, I'd be like, you don't need to say sorry if there's nothing to apologize for. Yeah. And, um, he started repeating it back to me and I was happy because I'm like, oh, good. So that means he's understanding it and that'll be something he carries like through him now, right? 
And I'm like, that's mm-hmm. good. You know, set these good habits for him so he can be a little more better off than me, you know. But and you know, you wanna oh, go ahead. you wanna just it's just the same thing. The whole theme is uh instilling confidence with your words and your uh, actions. Um you're apologizing right off the bat. You're kind of a sorry individual, you know? You're just a sorry person. And you don't want to be. Yeah. That's not a good thing. It's not a good quality to be. If you're an over apologetic person, I don't think anyone's gonna really want to hang out with you. Yeah. Cause then you're just like, oh God, are they that are they that paranoid about freaking people out or or wasting their time? They have to say sorry all the time. Like that's kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. Cause it, it annoys me. Like I know people like I'm not gonna like spit on their face or anything, but I mean I might I might leave a fl- a flaming bag of dog shit at their house. Why not? Um, not only that, but I, I, I know people's. I know some of my good friends will apologize for everything. Like, hey, you're like, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, dude, don't be sorry. Yeah. And and even like, yeah, it. You don't have to apologize for being you. You don't have to apologize for being human. Yeah. You know, unless like, you kill somebody. And even then, yeah, what's like, an apology at that point? You were late for five <laughs> minutes to somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, dude, who cares? So what? You're here now. Like, I feel like people were so we live such a busy and like scheduled life that whenever you're like a little bit behind or something or like the smallest inconvenience, like you feel like you have to apologize for it. When this, you know, you're fucking human. You're allowed to be late you're allowed to do these things there's nothing wrong with like being human dude like so just do you boo boo yeah be honest and and don't make so many excuses who cares just be confident take the L take the yeah take the L man and move on they'll respect you more for it you know don't dwell on it no you don't want to be that person you want to be that cancerous sore of a sad person yeah, um, no need for that. I was thinking number ten kind of sucked. Unless you yeah, think it was it good, make I don't sense. get it. It's I don't skip know it. why I put it on there. Just skip it. You can do number skip eleven. It. Number say. eleven. If you know what I mean. You know what popped in my head as soon as you when I read that. What you know what I mean? Doesn't fucking Ernest always say that? He does. You know what I mean, he Burns? Knows. You know what's funny? I was uh. just thinking about um, what's it called? <laughs> Uh, Ernest Saves Christmas, Christmas a couple days ago. That's probably one of the better ones. From that, from like the 80s Christmas ones? or from No, no, Ernest no, from ones? Ernest. <laughs> not, not from Ernest, dude. Come on. Okay. <laughs> like, they're Ernest movies. Like, I, I like Jim Varney and I enjoy him, but they're not on like my top 20 or top 50 <laughs> probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I haven't seen a lot of like Ernest movies, so... <laughs> Oh God, yeah. dude! He is he the white? Can I ask you a question before we get into this? Yes. Um, is Ernest to white? And I shouldn't say white. Is Ernest to American audiences what um, the Mexican B man is to Mexican audiences? Who the fucking who the fuck is the Mexican B man? Or not the B? You know the guy that the Simpsons make fun of, the guy oh, with the yeah. hat and shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? He's on yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's got like a hat and he's short and he just says random shit and then they laugh. Ha ha ha. So, because I don't speak Spanish well or understand things, because, you know, I only grew up here in California. How dare you? Where the main language is Spanish and Vietnamese, probably. <laughs> um, yeah. Get, get culture, <laughs> goddammit. Um, yeah, I just. <sighs> I'm just disappointed in myself, is what I'm saying. No, um. <laughs> <laughs> it comes down to that. No, it's I forgot what I was gonna say. I had a fucking weed brain fart right now. Danny, were you listening to anything I was saying? Because I was, I was, I was, I was. I was, I was. I You're spaced. talking about if if um if if Earn Earn Burn if he's to what? Oh yeah, and, and what is. is that? Is that is it? Am I right or is that is that not? The same you know, I, I I my knowledge of The Simpsons is not so no, not high The Simpsons there. I don't mean the Simpsons. I mean, like, is Ernest to American audiences what that Mexican character is to Mexican audiences? Elaborate. The the character I'm talking about. The yeah, but elaborate, elaborate. Like, what are you trying to say? 
Okay, like, give exa- me an example. Okay, you just want me to you just want me to put myself on the cross for this example. You no, could have just, just said yes, so. but I, I will. Hey, no, I will. L- l- I will put myself in a hole right now, and I don't care. Listen. So what I'm trying to say, script, as a me- as a member of the Mexican community, Mexican American. Oh no, I'm no, a Mexican. I'm a Mexican yeah. citizen. I'm allowing you to speak. Your, oh no, it's not going to be racial. It's going to be more uh, insensitive to mental capabilities. Wow. So what I'm saying is, is I'm intrigued. Go on. Okay. So like I said, it's a hole, and I'm I'm digging it. But I got a point on my shovel, and I'm ready to go. So what I'm okay. saying is. Ernest, in, in a way to me, is a handicapped person, or that's, I guess that's not right. Let's just say a mentally challenged individual, right? That clearly has he, got his struggles, and he, it's surprising he has an adult job. So what I'm saying okay. is, is it similar, because I don't know anything but, but silly little segments that I've tried to interpret Yeah, just by watching? Uh, is, it, is he kind of like that? Or is it just a silly guy that's not? He dumb. He's definitely not there. Okay, so it is similar. So it no, kind of is that. He, it, it's a, he's kind of a weird not guy. There. He's just like, like, like the engine is definitely running, but there's nobody behind. Okay, perfect. The wheel so it is that. It is that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. he is basically Mexican Ernest. He he's kind of like uh, I will say he's also like I should like just said that Herman. from the jump. Talk like, about communication. Like Pee-wee. And I love Pee Wee Herman, but I mean, there's something weird about being like a dude in your mid twenties, early thirties, being all childish and doing, you know, doing all this freaking little shit. That's you it's know weird. what I liked, and I agree with that, and that's and why I love as, a, as just, a kid, I, I, I fucking love Pee Wee. I just didn't like it as a kid though, and I really? and I well, I still don't necessarily love the whole movie. I like funny mm-hmm. parts of it but because of everything you're saying is exactly how i feel and i still feel that way like i i still respect him because it Wee was mm-hmm. a funny character and i like yeah. things that he does but overall like the creepiness factor is what is what prevents me from being a bigger fan well also one thing you have to remember about this character Wee, played by um paul rubin is that it was part of his comedy skit it yeah. was like this dweepy Right, man, child living his best life, oblivious to like the world, thinking that he's weird or he's different. And over time, he became like this childlike child figure, like fucking Blue's Clues. So I think that's where yeah he, he wasn't meant to be weird. He was supposed to be like a joke, like satire of that character. Yeah, but essentially, I'm pretty sure he got. Offered hella money to you know create his own TV shows oh, and I mean, be marketed yeah, he, towards kids. Yeah, he did his thing, but what what what? But, but still, though, the only thing creepy, it, it's it's how he looked. You know what it is, yeah. dude? It's the red makeup on the cheeks. It's the really yeah. bright lips. Mm-hmm. It just looks creepy, and you know, and it's not because he's a man. It's not because he's a boy dressing like a girl. It's because he's a man dressing like a boy dressing like a girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's like, I'm I not saying so. he's a creep. Hey, we just had this conversation. Refer to number one. What, pick a gender? Let's play the, our, no, next, was, our next segment, pick no, a gender. No, I was going to say, the, the very first thing we talked about, the uh, you know what I'm saying, or does that make sense? Remember, you know what, we, we, we're not using it anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, what we're trying to say yeah. is in Spanish and in English, we're not using it. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. Going back to uh, to Ernest saves I seen I saw Ernest saves Christmas for the first time like yeah maybe two years ago, and um I I cannot tell you any other Ernest I, I'm pretty sure there's like an Ernest goes camping or something like that yeah after a while like how why would you take this idiot anywhere if he's just gonna fuck everything up like who yeah who wants that kind of fucking stress well and then if you watch any of the movies he's constantly only hanging around children. Mm. Like the adults know who he is, but he's never really hanging out with any of the adults. Mm-hmm. Cause and they fucking find him annoying. Exactly. And yeah. it's like, it's not that he's a creep. It's that he's just a fucking aloof older man. That's just kind of goofy and a little weird, but kids think he's funny. So they hang out with him. But then yeah. it's also the creepy factor. You're like slash, maybe pedophile kind of like Pee Wee. Mm. You're kind of like, you don't know. You get that weird feeling. You know, you're like, if you yeah. would, 
if you saw, like, I know Paul Rubens is doing a character, but if you saw a person acting like that in real life, you'd be terrified. Yeah, it'd be fucking creepy. I would. Might as I'd well be a like, fucking clown. Yeah, exactly. But a more, like, a more, like, casual clown, which is even creepier. Because a clown has to put on a whole <laughs> a cool get-up. clown. They can't run away in those shoes, dude. You'll beat the <laughs> shit out of them. But, like, Paul Rubens, is in, he's just in his little loafers. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, one of these days, dude, we, we have to watch uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I, it's one of my favorite movies. I'm down. And we'll do a watch along. And it's so fucking funny. Like, I mean, obviously, like, is the infamous tequila scene when he goes into the bar yeah. and he dances that's, I think that's one of my favorites. My favorite is actually right after when, like, he comes out from the fucking bar, like, fully patched. Like, they, somebody gave him, oh, like, yeah. a biker bat, uh, the vest. Fully, oh, yeah, the like, cut. this fool went on from, like, being almost getting killed by like the wannabe Hell's Angels to like being a full on pledge brother Hell's Angel dude, dude you know, or Satan's helpers. Like, yeah, and he was probably name. only in there for like 30 minutes. Yeah, but he like won the people over. They're like, I hope you get your bike, Pee Wee. Like, they understand. Yeah. They even give him a motorcycle and like he drives off straight into like a fucking billboard. Like, that's fucking hilarious for me, dude. No, dude, you're right. And, and that's the thing too that's good about that movie. Like, um, cause what I meant is like, I never really got into the show, but like yeah, the, the movie, uh, Playhouse. Um, yeah. Pee Wee's Playhouse. Um, yeah, but the movie, like it, it had a lot of famous people in it too. So it was kind of like, that was kind of a cool, yeah. Like, there's little cameos of a lot of cool people. Yeah. Fucking fantastic. I, I really love that movie. It's freaking, I, I'm not sure if it's good because it's an actual good or I just like have a big nostalgia love for it because it's like, reminds me of a childhood and all this shit. And you know what? Sometimes it's good to look back, but it's always important to remember, don't live in the past. Don't look back in anger, I heard you say. Don't look back is not just a good Boston song. Really? I was quoting Oasis. I'm glad I am glad I went with mine. Oh, God damn you. I love Oasis. I do, but listen, the Gallagher brothers. They're toxic as fuck. Well, definitely. I mean, one of them we saw live with Smashing Pumpkins. He was a piece of shit. Like, I liked the music part, but when he was talking, you're like, God. Whoa. When he goes, yeah, I remember he Such goes, a like, douche. He, played, he played, like, three or four songs. And he goes, all right, I just play the songs I wanted to play. Now let me play the songs you fucking assholes want to hear, you know? <sighs> I just, like, dude. And he, went, yeah. and he went straight to, like, Wonderwall or something like that, and I'm like, you know what no, I was Gallagher? Do- you could have done you could have done that so much easier without like being a yeah, douchebag about it. You could have on to what we've talked about this whole episode, which was communicate a better way to do it. Maybe yes. that's his issue. Maybe him and Noel ain't gonna figure it out. But you know what, dude? That ain't my pro- Oh wait, no, him and Liam, right? Liam, yeah. Noel and, Noel and and Liam Gallagher. So listen, you know, like you ain't the first Noel. Get it? Because it's Christmas related. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. But it. I was doing, I was getting a little, I was really high. And uh, during um, Noel Gallagher's set, I was li- literally just being a complete arrogant ass, like mocking British. I was just doing British accents all the time. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I fucking love you. Like, I was just making fun. I was just mocking him the whole time. He was so stupid. And like, another example of someone I can't stand live, but I love them on album, uh, Stefan Jenkins. Is the worst. Um, oh god, he's so cringe live with his like pep talk. It's like Stephen. he's like the drunk Jenkins, from, the lead singer from Third Eye Blind. He's oh, he's like yeah. so preachy and annoying. He's oh, like, yeah. we are all one today, and it doesn't matter. And like you just hear the bass pumping in the background, and the drums yeah. kind of like doing a hi hat. And he's just like, yeah, we we came here together. We'll leave here together. And God fucking, no, he doesn't cuss. But it's just like, it's so, sh- it's like, dude, I'd rather, Reliant K didn't preach this much at their fucking set, dude. This is crazy. Uh, you threw fucking Reliant K out there, dude? Yes, sir. Because I have sir, seen them live twice, or maybe three times. Sir, that is a fucking deep cut of Christian pop punk early 2000s greatness. Thank you for recognizing and appreciating it. Relying K, what a fucking throwback, bro! I'm trying to learn Jesus. some of the. I'm trying to learn a song. It's the <sighs> one that goes. It's the one that me. And, I got my boys to mo- make fun of it too with me. So it's the one that. Oh fuck! Oh yeah. Ah, 
want to get out of here. Oh, so yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we always go. Uh, and then like now, now Steph like is like shut the fuck up, like because she loves you know she loves Reliant K, but so it's fun. We I have my jokes, but I'm gonna I want to learn that song, and then that the other song by uh, Dashboard, I think it's called is it something falling, falling down. Does that sound right? There's one that I'm falling or I've I have fallen or something, which is like no wait the the hook the love song. Uh, not to sound hipster while you say this, but I'm gonna sound hipster. I like Dashboard when it was just him and his guitar. It was just Chris and his guitar fucking crying and emo before he he got into the freaking hands down bullshit. Oh, hands my, down. I don't want happy. Hands want down is the happy. song. That's a the, cool song on guitar though. It's kind of it hard. Is. The intro. The, that was a song I was trying to learn. This is the best day I can. Ever. Oh wait, no, I'm not thinking of hands down. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Vindicated. No, I'm not so- that one. No. Let me look it up. I have it in my covers al- uh, playlist album. On I, my I'm Spotify. pretty sure there is. I think I know a song you're talking about because it was my friend's uh, weddings or first dance song. But I think it's like something fallen or something. I've fallen or something. Uh, that sounds right. It's, uh, uh, oh, it's hands down. It is hands down. Oh, the song you're thinking was Hands Down? By Dashboard. And then the song by Reliant K that I want to learn is Be My Escape. Oh, God. That song's horrendous. Horrendous? Yeah. You don't like the, that song the, by Reliant K? No. It makes me laugh because no. it goes, ah, I want to get. But yeah. it's very like, yeah. it's probably for them, it's their very commercial album, right? Yeah. Well, be, I know before that they were like super Christian. So nothing wrong with Christian rock, but. I like my Christian rock with like drop these and like, like I like my downs. Christian rock upside down. Yeah. Well, no, cause you know, Get it? Cause I, I love my like, like this. yeah, I got you. I got you. Nah, it just wasn't that good. Cause, cause I do love my, you know, August burns red. I do love fucking, um, demon hunters, a band. I'm not into them, but they're like a Christian metal band. Dude. Well, like, as LA Dying was the Christian band. Well, in the Texas in July. I like I think I told you I saw them, right? And I and I yeah. and I met the lead singer, the new lead singer at the time it was that JT KV guy. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I told you, right? He's the lead singer for Era. No, and you didn't I, tell me. I well, I found it out hella weird because I was watching Pluto TV and they had an August Burns Red documentary on there, which is so on odd. On Pluto TV? Yeah. Pluto wow. TV has a music channel that's actually pretty cool. And it'll okay. play documentaries. Pluto TV is amazing. It's absolutely it's free. Bad. Yeah. And I watched the Ask This Old House channel like all all day long. Yeah. I watch yeah, these yeah, guys yeah. fix shit and I'm just like, oh, this is cool. But um, yeah. they got all kinds of stuff. And they had that on there. And I saw the dude and I'm like, wait. They said Texas in July. I'm like, hold on. And then I started looking it up because I was obsessing about it. I'm like, what show was it? And where was it? Was it Slims or was it the DNA? So then I typed in, because I know it was with Unearth. And I typed mm-hmm. it in because it was the Oncoming Storm. I think it was that tour. The Oncoming Storm uh, 20th anniversary tour. Uh-huh. And um, I was oh, like, dude, this is cool. fucking badass band. But, dude, we met the lead singer. I was just talking to him at the merch table for Texas in July, and I didn't know he was the yeah. lead singer. Because, you know, when you're opening bands, you're working your own merch tables. But, you yeah, know, you don't, always, you don't always know. You could just be yeah. a, a friend of the band and shit like that. So so I was like, okay, cool. And this dude was super cool. And then we're chopping it up. And then, like, I don't know, like 10 minutes later, he leaves, and then he's just on stage tearing it up. Yeah, and he's got he's got a nice fucking growl to him. I don't know if you've ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's got a nice throaty. Like he's a good screamer kind of singer. And I was like, dude, that's sick. And then it was just cool because I guess he started once Texas in July uh, ended. He, they started. He started this band up with some other people. But dude, th- the musicianship in this era band is just insane. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the, the one guitarist that sings kind of like. He doesn't sound like Claudio, but he gives me like it gives me Coheed vibes just because it's very high and like the high melodic. Voice. Yeah, to go with like the really cool riffs because you know Coheed's super riffy. Yeah, and um, but I was like, dude, this is so cool, and and then it just it was even cooler when I was like, oh man, this guy is the singer, and like I know it's super fanboy of me to be like, oh, I met this guy eight years ago, and he's like, I know he doesn't know who the fuck I am. 
but it's cool yeah. that I was like, hey, there's the lineage of bands, you know, and still still sparking my fancy auditorily, yeah. which yeah, is well, cool. Texas in July was Texas in July was a badass band. I I I remember like. One of my favorite songs from them is from the first album. It's called This Isn't My First Rodeo. And it's just, like, so much riffish, so much, like, shred in it. And it's just, like... Pretty fun it's, ba- pretty it's fun such band. a freaking, like, great early 2000s metalcore band. Yeah. And it's a great time capsule. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that's, like... So they were a Christian band also. And I know, like, another band they were always compared to is August Burns Red, which is another Christian band. Well, those um, they're close friends with them. That's why. They're close friends. Drummers. Both bands have, like, amazing drummers. Very technique. Very, like, if you ever see videos of their drummers, they're, like, super technique. Like, stand up, you know, just you can tell there's, like, technique is, like, super amazing. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, musicianship-wise, both of those bands are amazing. Unfortunately, one got more exposure in the other one but you know that's just the way it is sometimes but yeah they're great friends with but it was meant to be because now this era band's blowing up yeah yeah and yeah, yeah and that'll always be good for what it was but I, I i'm i'm not upset with this project i love this the band's got a cool vibe yeah. dynamic mm-hmm. and the other cool thing about them is um bands are kind of cool now like back in the day you had to get your hands on a tab book I mean, we yeah. had bootleg tabs because now the tabs are legit. You can go on yeah. tab websites and get, excuse me, official tabs. But like back in our day, we used an MX tabs and fucking Ultimate ta- Guitar. Ultimate Guitar, yeah. Which I still use Ultimate Guitar, but. I still use that show. Um, but MX tabs was the shit back in the day. I loved MX tabs. And then, um, but like now these guys all have playthroughs. So you can go on YouTube and put in like, that song blank canvas and the dude has a playthrough for the whole song, including the solo. And it's like, dude, that's yeah. so cool. And it's just the camera right on the neck and then on his hand too. So it's like, if you want to learn their music, like I'm like, how cool is that? You know, like, yeah, it, it, that's becoming more common. It's like less like people worried about people copying and more like, Hey, check it out. And if you want to play it like that, cool, go for it. Cause at the end of I the think, day, you got to know how to do it. It's not like I you can just also- learn in two seconds. Yeah, I think the other thing also with this is that like we we listen to a genre of music where it's very do it yourself and it's very like community based you kind know, of thing. Like the big egos of like the older bands, like they're way over. They're just like, oh yeah, this is how it is. They're just stoked that somebody gives a fuck. Yeah, you know, kind of situation. That makes sense. Because I went to a couple months back. I went to see this band called Fiddlehead, um, and one of the guitar players from that band. Um, plays for another band called Basement, which is like another like emo pop punk kind of or punk rock kind of band. Mm-hmm. And I was geeking out over their freaking pedal board. I was like, oh, I want to see what kind of pedals he's using. Like, what's the settings? You know, what kind of board? We nerd. It was Ray and I, and we always fucking nerd out about that shit. Oh yeah. And so I told the guy. He goes, he goes, hey, yeah, man. You go, you have any questions about the board? And I'm like, oh, I'm oh, sorry, dude. I'm like, oh. So no, it's cool. I'm like, I'm like, hey, do you mind if I take a picture? He's like, oh yeah, dude, fuck yeah, I don't care. Um, he's like, yeah, he's all here, he's all here. Let me turn around so I can get like a better pictures of like this of like the settings of like the tone he has and all this shit on his on like uh, how he has to equalize on his fucking pedals and shit. And I'm like, is this the same pedal you use for like bass? He's like, oh yeah, it's the same one, same guitar, just different. He's all that's not my amp, it's a loner. So oh, I was like, okay. they're super cool about like sharing their tone and what they use and like talk gear. And I think like back in the day, like people were sort of like, oh, we don't want to give away our secrets. And now they're like, oh yeah, this is what I fucking use. Like, I don't care. They're just like stoked that somebody cares or something. Well, because back in the day, it was easier to steal things because there were less options, right? Like, yeah, that's um, true. Now it's like, because it's so saturated and like... um also, it's gotten to the point where everyone's a hybrid of any, everything anyway. Like, it's basically, it's like, one thing you've learned about musicianship, right, is the most important thing that makes you you is your touch. Which, yeah. it's very, very, almost next to impossible to replicate any specific artist's touch. Mm-hmm. Um, some people are good, but it's never quite right. You know, it's always like, oh, it doesn't sound right. Some yeah. People are really good, but it's just like, that's the point. That's the soul they put into it. That's their tone. You know, it's like not only is it just the guitar, the amp, the effects, the strings. It's also how hard they play. 
Like their, the way they their, play. Their technique, if yeah, you will. Their technique. Their style. And I think the best example of this is with um, is Red Hot Chili Peppers. When every think of Red Hot Chili Peppers, you think of that John Frustamante or what's his last oh, name? For, for Shante. For Shante's tone and style and kind of like. So you hear that, and then you hear like the one that Dave, Dave, oh, oh, Dave no. Mira, what the fuck? Navarro, is Dave Mira, Dave R. Navarro, R. Dave. Wow, rest in peace, Dave Mira. Dave Navarro did uh, with the Red Hot Minute. You can tell it wasn't Red Hot Chili Peppers; it wasn't there. And then most recently, when when John for um, what's the last name again for Shante? Yep. When he left, they brought in some other guy. And again, it wasn't there. Like this guy was an amazing musician, not shitting on this on either of those guitarists because they're fucking light years ahead of me. Yeah. Um, not even a, not even in the same fucking category. They're just amazing guitarists. But when it came to that style, to, to that, to, I mean, all three of them are amazing. They afford the best equipment and everything. But it's that, like you're saying, it's that touch, it's that creativity, it's that. It's that flair that kind of gave it what they, you know, what they were and what really changes. Another great example is like Travis Barker and, and Scott Rayner with Blink-182. Mm-hmm. Everything up to like Animal of the State, it has one style of drumming. But once Travis came in and started doing drums for Blink, it changed the the dynamic of the band completely. Yeah. So. I mean, having a good drummer in a band is like having a really good defense, you know, like it, it really is. Y- you can't win championships without a, de- a good defense. Like you need no. a, a, a amazing drummer, any yeah. great band, like excluding some people would say Metallica. Mm-hmm. But even but, then here, here's my exactly. Cause I, I know you're not going to rag on Lars and I was just going to defend Lars because if, if Lars was so shitty, like people say he would stand out a lot more. Yeah. And and, and it, you wouldn't be able to say, oh, that's a classic song because you'd be like, man, I really love the guitars, but I just can't get into it because the drums suck. I, you don't feel like that on any song. The only th- song anyone feels like that on is the whole album of St. Anger. And to be fair, that whole album yeah. sucks anyway. Musically, yeah. vocally, lyrically, it is probably one of the worst things that they created, but it was during a rough time. And I think I I've, mean- I've overlooked it. I was talking shit about Lars, like if I'm any fucking better of a drummer than he is. Um, but what my buddy once said was like, well, one thing about Lars is that he never went out there saying he was the best fucking drummer. No, he what he, what Lars did though is he played to the music. Mm-hmm. He never like stood out or anything like that. He played to like what the music was. So he never overplayed, but he never underplayed. Exactly. It's kind of like the ACDC effect. You know, if it's not, you know, it worked. It worked for like they were doing. And yeah, St. Anger is that snare and like that snare that just sounds like shit. Oh, terrible. But like, I- I'll admit, <laughs> I'll admit, I listen to, I listen to every now and then. There's like a couple of songs. I'm like, this is not so bad. Like the song St. Anger. Don't you dare or, say Invisible Kid. No, uh, what? The song "Invisible Kid." Remember that song? Uh, yeah, that one. That and also, terrible. well, Saint Anger, and then like Frantic, which is the other one, probably. Which one? Frantic. Is that the Frantic, the one that goes tick, uh, tick 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 tick? tick my lifestyle determined oh, my, my death, death style. style. Yeah, God. that one. And, and we know this because that album was so hyped because it was the album, right? It was one of the most. It was the fucking Chinese democracy of Metallica. It was you're so. You're living a liar. You're living uh, a liar. And the only redeeming quality about that music video is it was it was at a prison. <laughs> yeah. If, it was if that music Quinn. video wasn't in a prison, no one would give a fuck about Saint Anger, dude. dude. I was so. It was so overhyped. Yes, it was so overhyped. I remember it was like it came out like in the early two thousands. I'm like, oh, it was like oh three Metallica. Oh, new Metallica. They're gonna be fucking heavy and blah blah blah. And oh, we're going back to our roots. And I'm like, oh shit, it's gonna be fucking yeah. When they met Justice roots, for All or yeah. something. And like you listen to it, and I'm like, this was this is it. <laughs> and like even then, like. I my first song I heard from Metallica that I really got into Metallica was the uh, the King Nothing song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where's your crown, King Nothing? That's a good. People rag on their late '90s stuff. I like it. It's not bad. I mean, you're not gonna compare them to fucking like their masterpieces from like the yeah. earlier from the. I mean, 80s. but 
I just look at it like this. Like, they were a really good thrash band for, like, the first 10 years. Yeah. And then they became a really, really good hard rock band for the other 10 years. Yeah. And then now they're back to being a metal band again that has hard yeah. rock songs. So it's like, you know what? They did what they did. Kiss they're, did disco music for, like, five, six years, so. Yeah, and they also did glam rock without the masks, so without yep. the... The paints, and I like that song. Lick it up is a good song. Or um, lick it up, yeah. Lick up. Or what's the other one? The uh, God gave rock and roll. Oh to yeah, you. from Bill and Ted. Oh. Um, yeah, which is the other song from that time? My most played song on Spotify, "New York Groove" by Ace Frehley. Really. I like that song, but part of the reason why it's most played is because my kid liked it. So when your kid likes something. It's baby shark. They want to hear it I, all the time. I get it. So my little niece, she loves the fucking Squid Game theme song. Oh, that's creepy. She likes the uh, the flute thing. Oh, she loves the flute one. Oh. She has another one that gives me fucking anxiety while she I hate that. was driving. I finished she's that just like, show, by the way. And she's just like chilling there, like on the phone, and she's listening to like this super. And she has no music. idea what the fuck it means. No, she does. She does. No, but she, she hasn't seen, seen. She hasn't seen the show though. She has. How old is Dude, she? She's five. But my little niece, she loves horror. She loves gore, gory things, dude. Damn, dude, that's she, crazy. She loves it, dude. And we like don't watch it, and she'll like still watch it. She's still, and then she's always on fucking YouTube, which is bad. But of course, she's into it. She loves it. She understands the show. Yeah. She goes by. Um, the, she loves it when you refer to her as number 67, which is like one character from like Squid Games. Oh, yeah. She she, she fucking loves it. She knows exactly uh, what she's doing. I so. think 67 was one of the girls, right? I think so. So she loves it. Did you finish I'm, it? I, You know, I've never seen it. Oh, okay. I've watched it. Yeah. All. Is it is it good? Should I? Yeah, I think you should. Well, yeah, I think you should. Yeah, I think you should. I think you'll enjoy it. Because I did like, like, Battle Royale. That was a great Oh, well, if you, uh, it's not the same, but it's violent and random and different and Korean. I think it's Korean, okay. yeah. Yeah, but, Battle uh, Royale was Japanese. But, yeah, yeah. Same, same style or but, same But uh, what like I'm concept. saying, yeah, I think you would dig it. It's dark and different and, 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 um, and um, you know, mysterious. You can't always yeah. figure out what's going to happen, which I, I like stuff like that. The unpredictable shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Real quick, I watched the first two Conjurings, didn't watch the third one. So. Okay. What I will say, I think I like the first two equally. That's how well done I thought the second one was. The sec- There's only one part in the second one I did not like. What? Where I felt like it was kind of like, oh, this sucks. When like everybody's sleeping at the neighbor's house and the um the slender man or whatever comes out and like it grows and you can tell it's like all oh, computerized. Oh that I I I don't know. It didn't I thought it looked creepy. For me it was just like oh, that's just that was kind of whack. But there's super creepy parts like the random people showing up like in the living rooms or like in the couch and stuff like that. Yeah, it's is really good. I really enjoy number two. I still think number one is one of my favorites, just because it was fucking creepy as hell and like it was good, dude. It was really good. It was good. Number three, I saw once. I I should probably go back and see it again. Yeah, but I remember not hitting it. Yeah, I remember not hitting it. So and then I watched Hereditary. I I went on a huge horror kick. Oh, bro, I'm on part four of Harry Potter. I'm also, I'm just, I'm, I've been watching like insane. What were we saying okay. on hereditary? What's your, what is your opinion on that? What's your input on that one? Cause for me, it was, I love it. It was fucking creepy as fuck. So it's super it's, like, here's the eerie. thing that sucked for me. I wish I didn't okay. see anything before watching it. I watched mm. this show on AMC like last year that kind of spoiled the whole, it spoiled the girl's head getting cut off but then memes and everything kind of you know ruined it but yeah. i was relieved when everything i knew happened and i was only 35 minutes into a two-hour movie i was like okay now i'm happy because now i can watch this with just an open mind 
Everything else I knew was going to happen, but now I'm not. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, very Rosemary's Baby almost because of the whole cult yes. vibe. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed the fact that it was supernatural, not just psychosis. Yeah. Like with the dad lighting on fire, which I thought was probably the only funny scene of the movie when the dad burns. Yeah. Um, everything else fun. was just so depressing and sad. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed that scene. And then, but it was just like the ending scene. And then the, here's the thing too that fucked with me is you you loved that Joni character because you're like she's such a sweetheart. And then you realize it wasn't a support group; it was literally the witch cult. Yeah. Um, gathering information and you know, oh, it's, it's so scary. And then when you yeah. find out, like, because she said, "Oh, I, I," she wanted me to be a boy. It was just because of the whole fucking demon king shit like payment mm-hmm. and i'm like jesus christ so i really enjoyed it i liked it i liked it more than midsummer and i liked it more than vivarium mm-hmm. um probably never gonna watch it again because it just yeah. it gave me it put me in a mood it made me depressed yeah it's it was super a very depressing movie um, yeah nothing good i comes agree out of it. i agree with that but i did enjoy that it, be, it was a witch film i did enjoy that I've also been watching, um, I started, I'm still watching The Sopranos, um, and I've also been watching The Matrix. I've, I've never seen other Matrix movies, actually. I need to, so, re-watching the first one, I was like, damn, this is really good. And then I'm like, I gotta watch the second and third. And I started the second, and it was interesting and not as shitty as what some people were saying it was, but I didn't finish it, so I need to finish it. Yeah, I just finished watching the first one last night. Which was, I mean, I seen the Matrix, not from beginning to end, but I seen parts and pieces. Yeah. You know, I seen the major, so I, I, I knew what happened. But it was cool seeing it from start, from begin to it's end. Super conspiracy uh, though. Yeah, super Which is cool. And then right after we were done recording this episode, right before I go to bed, I'm gonna go ahead and start watching, um, the second one. I'm not gonna finish it all tonight, but you know, get a good, you know, maybe half an hour, an hour in. Yeah. Um, because I know I saw the trailer for the fourth one and that looked fun. So I want to know what the heck's going on. Yeah, me too. So, so that's good homework. Other yeah. good homework. Uh, Jeremy Renner has a show, not just Hawkeye, but he's a show called The Mayor of Kingstown. Okay. On Paramount Plus. Holy shit. It is fucking awesome. My, okay. this is the way I would describe the show. It's the wire meets Oz. Ooh. But most of it takes place on the outside. But it's in a nutshell, it's basically about a guy, like his family, like their dad basically started this thing where they keep the they keep everyone in check. Like he's an informant for the feds, but he's also um He's an informant for the feds, but he's also hella cool with the crypts, like oh, like the main crypt guy. Yeah. So like, but because they're completely transparent with everyone on the street and like to the cops, like there's a mutual respect and they kind of, he's known as the mayor. Like he's not the real mayor, but he's like. He's the one who he, runs like the he town. He keeps shit in order, you know, yeah. people go to him and, and, but he's not like mafioso, but then he is like, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of tight. So. Like I'm only on. I finished the first two episodes, and I was just like, "Holy it's shit!" Good. It's okay. It's good. Every episode, similar to Sopranos. You know, when you watch an episode of Sopranos, it's like a movie. Yeah, you're like, "God, this is so good." So yeah. it gives you those vibes. It's like a lot happens, a lot of action, a lot of cussing. Hey, be- before we go, let me tell a quick story about the Sopranos slash The Wire. Uh-huh. So, um, back in August, uh, we were in happy hour with my coworkers. And I, we were we're drinking, and it's myself, my coworker Monica, and um, Kenny, another coworker. Mm-hmm. We're drinking, and we start talking about movies, talking about shows, and Monica talks about The Sopranos, and I'm like, "Oh, I've never seen The Sopranos," and she's like, "Oh my god, you've never seen Sopranos? You've never seen The Sopranos? Oh my god, blah blah blah. It's maybe the greatest move. Is is maybe the, the greatest show ever?" Mm-hmm. And I'm like. I don't know. That's 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 quite a fucking like, like I don't title. Know. Friends is pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. 
Friends is pretty good. And she's like, really, Danny, what other show is better than the Sopranos? And Kenny and I, my, this is unplanned. Kenny and I, we kind of look at each other and Kenny's around my age also. Kenny and I, we kind of look at each other and then we kind of do like, at the same time, unplanned, we go, The Wire. <laughs> like we both said like, like, duh, The Wire is the greatest. And we like, we had, when we said it together, same tone, we kind of did like, <gasps> Did we just become best friends? Like we started nerding out about yeah. like how great the wire is and how it's the greatest show ever. And that's another show I want to rewatch again. I, I think I'll appreciate it. If I appreciate it when I was in my early twenties, I think I'll appreciate it more um, that I'm older. Um, the wire once again, cause it was such a fucking great show that I think, I think I'm gonna tell you right now, HBO's top three is gotta be Sopranos, the wire and, and Oz. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with The Wire. Sopranos is really good. But I'm also going to go with Borwalk Empire. See, I, I got into it, but I didn't finish it. And I like it. Okay. But because it's a period piece, sometimes I have to be in, like, same with Peaky Blinders. For some reason, I got to be in the mood to watch them. Yeah, I, I, I've seen, like, two or three episodes. It's not bad. No. Nope. But I can not commit to it. No, no, no. Peaky's fucking good. No, like it's good, you, but it's, because it's like a time period, yeah, I, I just couldn't commit to it. But it's good. I saw like two or three episodes. The same thing with like Downtown Abbey. No, well, okay, you lost me there. But okay, I I know people love it. <laughs> good try. I, I haven't good watched try, it. Well, I I get the um. I think you no. Know, as far as you're saying a period piece, that's absolutely correct because that's what the, exactly what that is. I just yeah. um, unlike the other two things we're talking about, it's not so action packed. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. By by all means, just to clarify, I've 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 heard great things about Downtown Abbey. I seen like an episode or two here and there. Yeah. Um recently I seen like maybe two or three more episodes. Um so I'm aware of it. I it's is I'm not fully committed to it, but I'm 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 not mad if it's on, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I mean and it's not even that I I despise it. I'm just like there's so many things I want to watch. Yeah. And that just that genre cuz it's not yeah. just a period piece. It's just it's kind of like I don't want to say sh- I don't want to say it and sound sh- shitty and uneducated, but to me the show seems a little too boring for me. Mm. Um Okay. To my taste. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and not Coop, that it's a boring day- subject. It's, but you gotta at, watch at what you day, like. You know, you gotta watch. What at you the end like. of the day, we're paying to be entertained. Exactly. Or we're we're doing. We want to be entertained, so of course we're gonna watch things that. Watch what you want to watch. If, yeah, if, exactly. If you want to watch? I mean, I like I said, I watched this old house on Pluto. You know how many people are probably like rather watch Downton Abbey than that? No, but I get I more love watching, joy like, the baking shows. Yeah, no, I, I love food shows too. I love baking shows. So cooking, it's you just gotta do what you like. You know, that's what it is, and it's not about what other people think. Cause fuck them, it's do what you want to do. Do what makes you feel good. Just clean up afterwards. You know, that's all we're asking. Like, like I, like I was saying, we'll end today episode with this. Don't if as long as you're not do whatever it is that makes you happy. As long as you're not hurting yourself. And you're not hurting others. Yep. And just don't be an asshole. Yep. Be a be a better person. Agree. Or be a better asshole. But Disagree. No, wait, no, because that would mean you're a worse person. Yeah. Disagree on that one. Yeah, but you mind. had it right don't, the first time. Yeah, dude. I had it right the first time. You know what? Yeah. You know what, Sheila? Sheila. <laughs> 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 Nothing like snapping your fingers at an employee. Um, you're going to take that out of post or you're fired. Thank you. Please. Yeah. Christmas bonus. Oof. You're lucky if you get a Hanukkah bonus. All right. Bruh. All right. Yeah. She's not Jewish. At least I don't think she is. Anyway. We should be working today because today's the last day of Hanukkah. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. This won't be out. Well, no, I'm going to probably speed. This is going to be put out tomorrow. Oh, wow. So Hanukkah will be over. Okay. Officially, mm-hmm. mazel mazel. No, yeah, gradle that, <laughs> cradle that, yeah, dreidel right. that. Is that what you said? Yeah, nice. All right, okay. Well, uh, you know, from here to Israel, we wish you guys a merry Christmas. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> oh man, 
Anyway, it's it's been a fun week. Um, it's it's good to wrap it up. And and this week was mostly just focusing on some strengths, giving ourselves a little pep in the step, and just going over some words and phrases that just don't sound great. We can sound yeah. better. So between that and not killing each other, I think that's all we have for you this week. And uh, next week we're going to come with some more hot fire. But until then, stay safe, be kind, rewind, and just, you know, use your blinker. Bus. Pase amor. Yeah, use your blinker, please. Use your blinker, and for God's sakes, don't just break all the time for no reason. Oh, that shit is the worst. Mm. All right. Peace, guys. Peace.